Ladies and gentlemen, it is Thursday, 8 p.m. roughly. Welcome to another occult discussion. Hope everyone is having a good day. And uh, today I have with me Georgina Rose because I've been on your podcast twice. You get to be on my stream. How are you, Georgina? Thursday's a good day to stream, I feel. I, I usually stream on Thursdays. It says, I don't always streamed on Thursdays now. At this point, like, every time I try to stream, it's just Thursdays. Oh, definitely. Microphone is off. Hold on. I can make. No, hold on. It says that they can't hear. Uh, yeah. One sec. I can hear you just fine. That makes no fun. Give me one. How about now? How about now? Can you guys hear? Hopefully. Not. Oh, God. I hope so. Turn off. just it usually just works i don't know why it's not working uh, didn't exactly have time for a mic check that's what's going on yes it is on me this can you hear me now i just pulled my phone off a charger does that make a difference does it chat sorry okay then i'm that oh again. god there it is. you know what Hang on. here george you say something so I am here. Okay, okay we hear her now. You guys can hear her now? Okay, cool. Yeah, should be able to hear you. I'm not sure what the hell is going on, but you know what? We're just gonna... Thanks. Alright, cool. Oh god, yeah. It really is. Yeah. Yeah, there was, there is not time for a mic check. Uh, there was not time for a mic check, because, uh, I don't know. It's, it's been a busy month, I feel like. Oh, definitely. Now she is inaudible. Are you fucking... Okay, how about now? Skipping in and out. Hello? Can you hear me? Did that fix it? I'm hoping this. Okay. I just keep talking. Hello? Can you guys hear me? Anyways, yeah, November is a weird time of year. I feel like it's very transitional and, I don't know, kind of just a, a strange lull of a time. Yeah, no, it's, it really just is like the worst time of year. Oh, and it's okay, like, audio is fixed, but. Perfect. 
it's just like, oh, oh no, like, it's weird. November is kind of like that weird month where, like, I mean, thinking about it, the sun just died, right? Like, isn't that what the metaphysical thing is? Like, the sun fucking dies? Well, it's that the sun's dying. So the sun has its ultimate death yeah. right before the um, solstice. Because the solstice is the rebirth of the sun. So we're, like, in the last little bit of the sun, when the sun is pretty weak. Um, and then the sun is, of course, born or reborn, however you want to think about it, on the solstice. Which is, I believe, the 22nd or so. Um, yeah. And if you're a Christian, you can say it's Christmas or whatever, because there's a direct parallel there, and say it's the 25th. Your choice. Um, but then, you know, it, it grows and it dies. I mean, the cycle of the year is a life, death, rebirth, microcosm, right? Um, in the winter, right at the solstice, it's born and then it gets sunnier. And it actually attracts the daylight patterns. Uh, it's the darkest night of the year to the lightest, right? And then it kind of grows through its youth through spring. It matures and ages through summer. And it starts to get a little cronish in fall. And then in this time of the year, it's it's death. Um, if you look at, like, the Sabbaths that, like, neo-pagans get into, Samhain or Halloween, is that one where things start to get dark, right? Before then, you get Mabon and Litha and all that. And it's, it's a completely different energy. And so this time of year is a very, you know, things are getting cold. It's getting darker. Um, very much a time of, of death and, and a bit of quiet. Um, we as people put a lot of things in this month. But if you think about, like, the weather and the metaphysics, like, it's a... Kind of a quieting down time. Definitely. And I feel like uh, this time period, one of the things that I think a lot of people don't really remember is that recently, I don't know if you've ever experienced this, but I recently have been trying to reacquaint myself with the solar powers. I've been reattuning myself to the sun, which does all sorts of wonderful things. But uh, they don't really tell you that if you... You know, if you reestablish your connection with the sun when it comes to, when it comes to the fall, uh, you end up taking on those qualities of the sun, and so you end up being absolutely tired. You, like, it is absolutely worse. I think spiritual depression when you're reattuning yourself to the sun is the absolute worst on the winter. Or when it's like fall, winter, that kind of thing. Oh, yeah. Like, people who are truly really solar in their practice kind of hate this time of the year. Um, I've noticed people who are really solar almost get symptoms of, like, seasonal depression. I do not have a very solar spiritual practice, actually. So I actually metaphysically do pretty good this time of year. But that's that's something I feel like people don't expect, that I'm actually not very solar in what I actually do in ritual. But um, I'm a big fan of the death movement. Uh, so they're also my favorite time of year. I like fall. I like winter. I don't like spring and summer. I have, uh, like, reverse seasonal opinions. <laughs> I don't blame you. Yeah. Uh, when I started my practice, I was exceptionally, like, when I started my practice, winter was the the month and, like, that time of year was my favorite. Now it's, like, absolutely just give me eternal spring, eternal summer. I am golden. Um, I do not want to deal with the cold. But you yeah, know, we're we're in reverse. You're um you're big solar practice, and I'm like pretty much the opposite. Okay, I'm glad someone in chat agrees with me in the uh, anti summer stance. If you're doing uh, so someone in chat said they're doing a bunch of solar work right now. You actually can still do solar work just because like it's a very weak sun time of the year does not mean that you can't you know, still work with the sun. And if you, you know, in a way it can kind of balance you out a little bit if you're feeling really impacted. Because the astrology the past, like, two months have been really, has been really rough. Um, it can kind of balance you out. I believe, and I've said this on my channel, that, like, when it comes to planetary energies, it's very important to balance them. Kind of like that old idea of humoric medicine, but not as literal. Um, and I think the Picatrix makes this argument. I read this, I'm 99.99% .99 sure it was in the Picatrix. I could be wrong. I could it could be like one of the Solomonic texts, but I, I, it was one of the older grimoires that said that like with the planetary energies, one really planetary oriented one, which makes me think it has to be the Picatrix. And I it's Picatrix is my favorite. I think it is in the Picatrix. What you're talking? Yeah, about. Yeah, like you basically have to balance them out, like humors. Um, yeah. Right, like you, it's like you gotta check your levels and kind of 
you know, if you're deficient in something, work with that thing. And Crowley actually made that argument as well. He suggested like men work with one feminine spirit and women work with one masculine spirit to sort of balance everything out. Um, Because when you get unbalanced, a lot of problems happen in my in my belief. Oh, yeah, no, definitely. In my experience, when you get too unbalanced, it causes nothing but problems. And definitely the balance is balance is important in anything. I mean, like, balance is, like, the, that one thing, like, even being solar, if you get down to it enough, you have to become balanced to become more solar after a certain point, it, which is a really interesting dichotomy there, because, um, you know, they have the, I was rereading Agrippa, because I'm doing that, like, I'm doing a little lecture series on Agrippa, and one yeah, of yeah. the things is, uh, the cross is said to be the most, like, cross is a very solar symbol. Yeah, well, Christianity is a solar religion, fundamentally. Like, Jesus is Tiferet. Um, Jesus is oh, yeah. the sun, very literally. So, I mean, you yeah. can't get more solar than Christianity. In terms of, like, religions, the Picatrix actually assigns different world religions. This is a little bit of a controversial thing it does, but I actually think there's some value to looking at it. Two different planetary bodies, and it assigns Christianity to the sun, which I, I think is very fitting. Oh, I tend to agree that Christianity... Christianity tries to be very solar. Christianity tries to be very solar. Um, I know that Jesus usually gets correspondent to the solar mysteries, but Christianity as a whole usually gets, because of the Crusades usually, gets correspondent to, I believe it's Mars and Gavura. Usually. Oh, I totally disagree with that. I, I hard disagree because... Yeah, Chris political Christianity has a sort of militant to it. I know the Catholics call it like, the church militant or whatever. But that's really not as in, like, like it is, like, obviously, like, come with a sword and shit like that is in the Bible. Oh, yeah. But I wouldn't, or I wouldn't really say that, like, Christianity is a martial religion. I think there are other paradigms and, and currents. I like to think about religions as sort of currents. Um Definitely. If you're familiar with the language, I think that fits a little bit better. And I think if you look at, like, the Christian mystical current that you tap into when you do Christian mysticism and stuff like that, um, you don't get a very martial vibe from Christianity. Of course, there are militant forms of Christianity, and especially, like, some of the archangels and whatnot. Like, absolutely, like, Archangel Michael, you know, you can see that. But I wouldn't say Christianity on the whole is martial. I think there's other things that fit that label. And I think there are actually certain metaphysical currents out there that I've, you know, I've, I've interacted with a lot of different metaphysical currents that feel much more Gevara to me than Christianity stuff ever has. Yeah. I would definitely say that Christianity, when it comes to, like, the actual practices and teachings of Christianity, it is a much more solar than a lot of people give it. Even than people who call it solar realize, I think. Because it's always also, like, like Go ahead. What, do, what do we think about when we think of solar archetypes, right? We think of knights, we think of kings, like all these things. Like, yeah, that even fits within that kind of vaguely martial quality that certain forms of Christianity have, right? Like, I don't know. I I think I think it's solar. I I believe this. I feel strongly. The numbers in Christianity, if you want to go like schizo mode, like that tends to get solar. Um, yeah. Someone in chat is saying that um. Saturn makes a ton of sense for Judaism, I would tend to avoid it. Yeah, Judaism is, is definitely correspondent to Saturn, and the Picatrix uh, makes that correspondence as well. Um, I would completely agree with uh, Judaism being a highly Saturnian current. It's, um, kind, of, it's kind of funny, because Judaism in Jewish Kabbalah corresponds to Tiparath. But then if you look what planet they correspond to Tiparath, it's Saturn. So, no, they're Saturnian. Well, they're called... Their Kabbalistic correspondences are actually a little bit different than oh, they're the Hermetic they're correspondences different. that we're using. Yeah, like, it's a different system. Like, you can put them together. Like, there are, I mean, if you're going to read anything out of Jewish Kabbalah, I feel like the one thing you probably should read is Sefer Yetzer, specifically the Arya Kaplan commentary version. But if you look into, like, the Zohar and Luria and stuff like that, it's really not very much to do with the stuff that we talk about at all. Like, it's, no, it's not even close. And the like the way that people interface with Kabbalah in say like Thelema or Medicine, it's it's com it's a completely different beast. Um, and Jewish Kabbalah itself is actually not the most practical mystical system. Like it's more about like mysticism 
proper. I'm um, someone that uh, was an intentionally non-practical. Like they don't. Yeah, want it's you not using meant it to be. That's not the point of it. Um, no. uh, someone said, "I'm just reading the chat." Christians worship on Sunday, so solar. Jewish worship on Saturday, so Saturn. Muslims worship on Friday, so Venus. Some people have attributed Islam to Venus. I get that correspondence. I think it's more lunar. Uh, the, the reason why you could correspond Islam to Venus besides uh, the holy day being Friday would be um, the star and crescent imagery and motif before Islam was used specifically in connection with Inanna and Ishtar, which are Venusian kind of spirits. But I think Islam is more lunar just because it's all based on a lunar calendar, lunar timings. Um, before Islam rose, Allah was the name of the moon god. Like, I think it's it's just a bit more lunar. And if you read, actually, the names of Allah, which you can read those, they're very available, there's 99 names, they're actually all emotional traits. Every single thing is like an emotion. It, it's not like, like, if you look at the names of, like, Hashem, they're very different types of things that are given the names, right? Like, they're, they're very emotional descriptors. Um, so I would say, yeah, but you can correspond all this stuff to different things. And, and then when you look at it, different religions are different currents, like mystically. And you interface with them and they affect you in a way that does sort of change you. If that makes sense. Oh, definitely. That definitely makes sense. And that is a really good explanation for why it would be, why you would say something is lunar because of the emotional component. Because when you think of, like, even if you're just like using modern hermetic kabbalah and you think oh yeah this is lunar that's going to elicit an emotional a deep powerful emotional response it doesn't necessarily tell you what kind but it will be a deep emotional response in some regard so well, the truth is that they won't tell you is that you can actually work with any spirit for any intention right you you can like there's no one stopping you from that but the reason why you would pick a spirit related or to what you want is because whatever you work with to get a thing is going to be colored by the spirit you interface with, right? Like if you get a job, like if you're doing a job, a job spell, everyone does job spells, right? Or money spells or whatever. Yep. If you go through Jupiter, you're gonna get, most people say to go through Jupiter or Mercury, but if you go through different of these channels, you get a different thing, right? Um, yes, so- Jupiter, like it'll, it'll you, you can explain this. Oh, okay, so yeah, no, I was, I have an entire video on the channel about uh, different uses for money spells, like going through all of the different you know, the planetary powers you would work through and why you would work with certain spirits and planetary forces over others. And one of the things that I find fascinating, because I've been reading a lot of old grimoires, you know, I usually read the uh, Agrippa's, the greater keys. So I was looking through the grimoires and a lot of the riches stuff is actually solar, like surprisingly solar. And if you look at it, nowadays people say to use Venus and use Jupiter, but in the past, they would have said use Jupiter or Sol. And the reason yeah. why is because in the past, if you wanted to make money, you had to make it through your own power. Nowadays, yeah. you can just get a job and you can get a fairly lucrative job just by going to the Jupiterian spirits and say, hey, Jupiter spirits, give me a job. And they'll be like, we got you. And the way that if you went through a Mercury spirit, because that does get recommended a lot, is if you have a job related to communications or speaking, that makes a lot of sense, right? Like if oh, you yeah. are someone who works in sales, marketing, uh, you speak a lot, like you give presentations, you're a professor, you're something like that. Mercury makes a lot of sense. And as well, like if you use Mercury, what I would say to use Mercury for in this type of situation is for interviews, right? Before you have an interview or something like that where you need to talk to someone and sort of impress them, Mercury is probably the way to go but mercury is not going to give you that endless expansion that say jupiter would right mercury is a bit more specific right a lot yeah. of people associate mercury with money because of these things but you know it's it's not necessarily the way to go for certain situations right where it's like maybe if you work in like the beauty industry or your hairstyles or something you could actually do this through venus people would not think to do that but like it, it just it's you're going to be colored by whatever spirit you interface with for whatever your intention is um, oh, so definitely. most correspondences, like, talk to the spirit for this, are just kind of logically based on that. But technically, you are not limited by that, if that makes sense. Also, like, for the people asking... Ask something happen. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Uh, for the people asking in chat, um, the reason why there's a game is mostly background noise. That's why there's a game. And yes, uh, Dot Darling is here. 
Say hi. And I am not playing the game, by the way. No, I'm not. No. I do not uh, game. Last time I watched Georgina play a video game, it hurt my soul. So I'm not going to subject you guys or her to that. That's not going to yeah, happen. Yeah, I... It was like probably two years ago. I actually did a gaming stream and um, yeah. I was, it was Minecraft and I couldn't figure out how to open the door. And so like 30 minutes of the stream was them just like explaining to me how to do things. And then I just decided to like walk my little Minecraft dude into the lava like repeatedly because I thought it was funny. And they're like, that's not how you play the game. So we do not game with me. I'm not no, really a I, gamer. I asked you to come um, on this stream. You asked me if I you needed to play games, and I said I'm not going to subject you to that. That's not going to happen. Yeah, I appreciate that. Yeah. There was the only video game I've ever like gotten into was there's this game called like Papers Please. It's like very silly and stupid, <laughs> and it's it's like easy, so like I can do it. That is but a very I, not... new game, all things considered, because it's just for those of you who don't know what Papers Please is. That's just you are a passport person. Uh, why no faces? Because I lost my face in a deal with an angel. So I don't have a face. That's why. Yeah, Amateur Vegas does not show his face on I, the internet. And three it'd be weird if only I had have my seen face. my face on the internet. That should tell you something. I feel like it'd be weird if it was just my face, right? Like It would be weird, and that's, you know. So. Yeah. There's behind the scenes stuff. I want to see your plate Oregon Trail. I'm not going to do that. That's not going to happen. Though. Is it hard? No, it's easy, but it's just it's just a miserable experience. Is that the is that where the um I've died of dysentery meme yeah, comes from? Yeah, that's where the I died of dysentery meme comes from. It's, okay, yeah, yeah. No. That's a vibe. That is a vibe, but very Saturnian. Oh man. So yeah. It's it's one of those interesting things where you go through and you, like, look at the games that you used to play and, like, the nostalgia, and then you, like, I don't know. I feel like, I feel like my gaming taste has changed since becoming an occultist. Like, I can't enjoy things anymore. You know what I mean? Are you one of those people who's, like, one of those occultists who, when they watch, um, like, horror movies, they get annoyed when, like, the occultism is inaccurate? Because I never got no. quality, but I... Okay. I'm not one of those people, but I will say that I am... I am definitely one of those people who's like, if you're gonna do occultism in a in a piece of media, please be well studied, right? Or Yeah, I feel like you either need to be just completely creative and not even give a, give a crap at all and like don't even try yeah. to be accurate and just do like fiction... Or you have to be really accurate. I feel like when it's, like, this, like, weird middle zone is where it doesn't work, right? Like, I don't, like, when I'm watching a, a movie that's very clearly not, like, trying to be real occultism, I don't mind if it's not accurate. Like, I don't really care that much, right? Like, uh, like the Good Omens TV show, right? Like, they're not trying oh, to be yeah. accurate metaphysics. They're just, ha it's just a fun show. But, like, if it's something like Strange Angel where it's trying to be, like, historical fiction about um jack parsons like i actually do want that occult to be accurate and i will be a little bit annoyed if it's not it's that middle zone that i don't like if that makes sense i mean if you're gonna have real occultism you need to have it be authentic right like yeah uh, what was that movie uh the abermelon one dark song dark song yeah people like to point to dark song they really like it um i, I didn't see it until like two years ago i was like way behind on it i think you want know what it is i feel like people recommend dark song a lot because it's more accurate than most but I don't know. I don't. It's fine. I mean, it's more accurate than most, but it's still not that accurate, right? Like, I don't know. I feel like if you're gonna wreck accurate occult media, I mean, you should probably go Strange Angel, right? Like that seems to be the most logical recommendation, right? I, I have a confession to make. I still have not seen Strange Angel. Oh, it's good. Uh, if you get a free trial with CBS All Access, uh, you can actually, like, they'll give you two free trial rounds. Oh, will they? Um, at least they did this for me. Yeah, I, I canceled it when I, I watched, I got the subscription just to watch Strange Angel when I did my review on it, like, four years ago. And um, I watched the show, and I didn't finish it by the time my, like, subscription ran up or whatever for the free trial. And I wasn't going to pay for CBS's streaming service, right? Yeah, but I they don't actually, blame you. Like, I, I said that I was canceling it. And I think I, like, said, like, I can't afford or something, even though I, I can't afford a tiny. Oh, um, but they actually just gave me another month for free. So, oh. 
I don't know if they do that, like, as, like, a glitch or something, or just, like, it's a policy they have, but, like, it's, I mean, it's good. Like, like, Strange Angel is actually a very good show. Um, the only things that are, I would say, inaccurate are they made the Gnostic mask more extreme because they said that the original Gnostic mask just doesn't look cool on camera. Basically, what they've done with a lot of the Thelema rituals is they just kind of, like, leveled them up and made them spookier or more extreme or wilder, but it's not actually a huge deviation. Like, you hear in their Gnostic mask scene the, I am the daughter of, you know what I mean? Like, the yeah. Nuit monologue, like... It's, it's very well researched and very good, but they actually, the show got shut down. And this is a bit of a conspiracy theory, but I think, it's someone in the chat mentioned it, L. Ron Hubbard shut up. Yeah, so they wrote in L. Ron Hubbard and then mysteriously the show got canceled when it had good ratings. Wonder why. Um, there's a big conspiracy theory that Scientology wanted to shut it down because Scientology heavily denies the L. Ron Hubbard and Jack Parsons connection and they get really weird when people bring it up. Um... Oh, it was on a CBS All Access, their online streaming platform, not on uh, their cable show. Basically, they tried to make, like, edgier shows for their streaming site, not for their network. But it's good. I mean, I, I would recommend it. Like, it's it's a good, it's a good show. Yeah, it's definitely one of those shows that's on my list. I just haven't gotten around to. You know, there's a lot of those. I, like, there's way too much occult media at this point, I think. Yeah, well, there's a lot of it, and there's a lot of, like, meh occult media. There's some that I would say are, like, standouts. Um, yeah. I know a lot of people really get into this, like, Law... It was Lodge 42 or Lodge 49, and I didn't love that one. I just... I don't know. Do Strange Angel if you're going to do any of them. I also liked... I know some people get weird about Midsummer and they say it's, like, to demonize pagans, but I actually really liked Midsummer, and I thought it was pretty solid. And then The Northman is also good. Um, but... Then there's The, the Vavitch. The Vavitch is great. I actually saw that one um, in theaters when it first came out. It was it's, it's very good. I like the Vavitch. I did not, but I did see it, and it it is amazing. That well, is it's very much, if you're into like cultist sabbati type stuff. It's like oh, definitely. You're I there's a lot of those really good. Oh, somebody mentioned your favorite. The I love the Love Witch. The Love I, my Love Witch is like people like. I feel like it's a toxic trait of mine and, like, kind of, like, alarming that it's one of my favorite movies, but I actually love The Love Wish. Um, it is such a... It is a very like, you movie. Campy. It's meant to be campy. That's the point. Like, it's meant to, like, be, like, a 70s pulp movie. That's what they're going for. They do it well. Yes. Um, and there's constant, like, occult references in that show. Like, and if you've ever been involved with, like, a real-life cult community, um, especially around, like, Wiccans or Thelemites, like, you're gonna... You're gonna get it's gonna gonna touch you a little bit and be like, yeah, that's kind of what these people are like. It's a little bit of actually a roast on the real life occult community in some ways. It kind of uh, does. Yeah, and it, it actually talks a lot about like toxic parts about esotericism. So I, it's a good movie. I like it. Uh, it's kind of like pulpy and push, but that's what it's trying to be. I mean, it's and it's okay if it's gonna be that, just because like if it's gonna be if you're gonna be campy, commit right. Yeah, they committed to the bit. They absolutely committed to the bit. Good. You need to commit to the bit if you're going to do something like that. Just because, like, if you're not committing, it's... What's the point? Honestly? Like, yeah. I hate to say it that way, but that is really, like... If you're going to commit, commit. Don't... You can't be campy and also be serious at the same time. No, you gotta pick... Somebody just said, uh, Love Witch is a cultist girl Barbie. Kind of true. It, it very much is. And it's actually gotten more popular because now, like, the people who are, like, the coquette aesthetic are really into it. Oh, yeah. Uh, which is kind of kind of funny to me. I am... You know what? I, I take back what I said. I'm not a fan of the Love Witch except for one angle. You ready? What? What's the your... the best anti-love spell propaganda. Yeah, oh, it's right about love spells. Do oh, not, like, God. do not do the love spells unless... There's specific ways you can do a love spell that I, I will say is a good idea. But, um, do not do it in the way Elaine does it in the movie. Oh, I, no. Don't, do not... Okay, chat, if you take away one one message from, from all my work, uh, don't do love spells on... Don't do the targeted love spell thing on a specific person you know. Because that doesn't end well. It never ends well. It's like a recipe for disaster. It um, can and will screw up. Like, every no, single the only, time. 
No, the only way to do a love spell that, like, will work and, like, not screw you up is to do it vaguely. Like, just kind of, like, yeah. do a spell attracting someone with a list of traits, right? Like, just kind of, like, list out your ideal partner and do something like that. That's a very good method. And the other method is when you're in a relationship with someone currently to make the relationship stronger and better, but obviously try to get consent of the person you're with. Those are good. Like, strengthening what you have you know, refreshing the sparks, all that. Very, very good. Definitely. Target love spells on people you know at work who are cute, who do not like you. Bad idea. Actually, one of the craziest DMs I ever got was when I was really new to being, like, online. This is when I was just on Instagram. Because if you guys don't know this, my first platform was actually Instagram. I was an Instagrammer first. I didn't actually do any original content. I just kind of, like, shared stuff from books I thought was cool. Um, and then I started a podcast, and then I became a YouTuber, and now I'm here, right? But I was originally just an Instagram account. Uh, this was, like, I think it was literally, like, 2019 when I made my Instagram. I started doing podcasts on YouTube in 2020, but I think my Instagram started in 2019. And basically, I got this DM from someone, and they're like, can I pay you to do a ritual for me? And I was like, maybe. What is it? Oh, no. The guy was like... I was like, okay, tell me what you want before I um, decide on that query. Now I'm not doing rituals for any of you guys. That's not happening. But I was like, new. I was like, you know what? Maybe I do. I do a paid ritual. Why not? Now, if you want, you can join my Patreon, and I can give you. I do these consultations where I like guide people on their spiritual oh, yeah. path and give them advice and whatnot. Like, I'll do that. I'll even like give you like steps to follow. Like, I'll like make a ritual for you. But I'm not doing rituals on behalf of people. And I don't think you should buy rituals that other people perform for you, by the way, guys. I, I don't recommend that. I can explain why. Um, but basically, this guy DM'd me. I'm like, oh, I want to do a love spell. And I was like, oh, tell me more. Like, I was honestly kind of just bored and interested, right? And they told me that they want to do a love spell on a woman who had a restraining order against him to make her marry him. Um, she had an active restraining order against him. Yeah. Um... Hmm. He also did not offer to pay me enough money for me to do it. <laughs> Either was like, he offered me, I think it was like 50 bucks or something. No, it's not a no, lot no. for I, a paid I, ritual. I, yeah, no. Not a lot for that. Not a lot for this poor woman who he's probably like terrorizing, to be honest. Oh, no. I'm um, yeah, doing no. that. That's, that's like, there are so many red flags there. It is not even funny. That is wild. He sent me a uh, picture of Dude, like it was like he like had like he's like I think he probably paid someone else. I'm sure there's someone else who was willing to do it, right? I mean, there's always I somebody willing. Probably would. Uh, yeah, you guys are making good points in the chat about the better love spells. Um, oh, fix yeah. yourself, and you'll find someone naturally. Um, I've like, just had so many bad experiences with like people doing love spells, horror stories <laughs> about love spells that I've just started saying like nothing good happens from candles. No, I have done uh, love spells myself when I was, like, younger and newer and understood less. Like, I, I did love spells. Oh. And I can tell you from my own history, <laughs> they didn't work. And they worked wrong. And it was just, just not a good time. Why oh. do I not recommend you buy spells? Um, so I'll caveat this. I think it's totally fine to buy specific oils made for you, specific candles made for you things that people have written out for you, stuff like that. Like, I think all of that's great. I generally would not recommend having someone else perform a spell for you um, most of the time because often, one, you don't know what actually, like, their level of practitionership is, right? Like, if someone makes a candle for you, like, I, I um, about a year ago, I paid a Santero to make me this, like, very elaborate, procedure procedure and candle for me to use because I, I had a situation where I thought they would work it. So I went to a Santero. I went like on a train ride to a very weird and kind of sketchy place and like hired them to give me a procedure basically, right? As uh, you do. Yeah, yeah. And that's totally fine. But they actually they don't perform them for you. So if you go to a botanica and get someone who like does this type of stuff, they won't. Um and th that's because people who do perform First of all, people who do perform spells on the internet for you are often not great practitioners. Um, second, it's very hard to get proof that the person actually did it. So some of these people on Etsy who do paid spells don't actually perform what they do. So they're just basically taking your money for nothing. Yep. Um, you don't know exactly what they're doing, which 
you generally want to know, like, if someone's doing a spell, especially if it's something that's on you, right? Like, if you want, like, a get a job spell, like, that person, if you are hiring someone else to do it for you, you're actually, they are actually doing a spell on you, right? Like, if you're, so it's, it's actually asking someone else to do magic on you, which, if they're not a great practitioner, or they fuck it up, or they use a spirit that doesn't mesh with you, like, it could go bad. I think there's a way bigger room for error in these situations than when you do it yourself. Um, so it's just, I wouldn't, I would be. And just to add to that, if, you know, you and I both have some level of proficiency in the occult, right? Yeah. We Been don't have this. time to be doing magic for people. Yeah, no, I, I wouldn't. Um, if you want, you can get people to set stuff up for you or yeah. give you um like baths to do like a lot of if you a lot of witch stores and occult stores like there's one um in new york in the east village that i like they're called enchantments if you're a new yorker they will make specific candles for your exact like you can go in there and tell them exactly your problem and they'll give you like oils specifically for that they'll carve you a candle just for you with like sigils and stuff and they'll give you like certain like baths and stuff to do and like literal instructions and then you go and do it for yourself and I think that's a much better way of operating. Oh, absolutely. Um, yeah, I, I think that that's... If you're going to do paid magic in any way, that's how I would recommend it. There are some people who do do spells, like, for other people that do good work. Like, they're not all bad. But the people who are good at it and who do it, and that's their whole job. Because if you're doing, like, elaborate ritual people, that's got to be your whole job after a certain point. After a certain point, you know? yeah. Yeah, it just... Uh, they're few and far between. So generally, I would say no. Um, but for buying stuff from other people like that, or consulting with someone, or doing a mentorship, or stuff like that, like that's all totally fine. I'm not, I'm not knocking any of that. I support all that stuff. It's just, I don't know. Most paid sellers, especially ones on the the internet, like ones on Etsy and stuff, are just not great. Yeah, no. I, depending on the person who you're trying to get to, depending on the person you're trying to get to do magic for you and the person you're trying to buy a spell from, uh, it can be either ineffective, amazing, or an absolute nightmare, right? Yeah. Is, well, you're... Depending on the community, there are horror stories about, oh, I did this spell to, like, have somebody break a curse, and then they threaten to curse me, right? That's way too common, right? I feel yeah, like that's someone... way too common. Yeah, someone in the chat mentioned that they got vamped and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, some of the people who do paid spells do stuff like that. Like, I, yeah, they do. They'll do things slightly different. They're just it, a lot of them are kind of easy people, to be honest. Yeah, uh, it's, it's not the so, best. I don't know. Buy oils and candles made for you. Consult with someone who can explain to you what to do. Also, generally, it's just better to do these things yourself. Like, it's just when you do a ritual yourself, you're gonna connect to it more. Um, and also, I don't. Personally, I don't generally like it when other people do magic on me. Like, oh, I yeah. like don't do magic on myself. Um, so. I, I, I very rarely do magic for other people, and I don't do it for clients. Um, if I need to do magic for somebody, I, I actually know you, and I've gotten approval. You know what I mean? Because that, it also just works better. It also works better if you have a more solid connection to the person you're doing for than just, yeah. I am a random person from Etsy. Oh yeah, spirits, please help this random person from Etsy who played me 50 bucks. Half of which I have yeah. to spend on candles. Yeah, I sometimes go on Etsy and look up like love spell and stuff and just kind of like read through the listings and kind of like laugh at them because some of them are really ridiculous. Um, I think my favorite thing I see on, uh, Etsy is the, like, buy a succubus stuff, those stores. Oh, those are great. Love those, those. Those are pretty funny. Um, I'm like, I'm like, has anyone, first of all, has anyone actually bought them? Um, second of all, I don't think that would, it, it's the wildest shit. I mean, I feel like if somebody has bought, like, they have positive reviews though, right? So... I mean, maybe Why it do does. They have positive reviews. If, I don't, I don't know. know. I it does. Mean, maybe I'm just a hater. I don't know. Um, I have never bought a succubus on Etsy. Also, wait, would that be like human trafficking, but for spirits? Like technically, I believe that's called simony. No. 
Okay, so you should not be like spirit trafficking. Like I believe, I believe if you're buying a spirit, it's considered simony. Somebody can correct me in the chat if I'm wrong, but I'm ninety nine percent sure that that is. A really? People thing. sell weird stuff online. There's a lot of people who claim they sell spirits oh, on the internet. I don't think you should buy spirits on the internet. I mean, I also don't think you buy spirits on the internet, but you know, buying spirits on the internet just sounds like. I went to eBay and I bought a succubus. How'd it go? Like, that's what that feels like to me. At yeah. Least. Also, uh, Yellow Clyde King, what you're describing is completely different than what I'm talking about. You're good. That's all fine. I've done. Yeah, no, that's different. I've done magic for people who have asked me to before, like friends of mine. And I've, I've oh, asked yeah. friends of mine to do magic on me. Like, that's completely different than, like. And this doesn't include divination either. No, it does not include divination. Buying divination totally fine. I mean, I, I actually would recommend people to sometimes get readings from other people. Often you get readings from other people who are good at it, you have to pay something. I yeah. paid for readings. Um, and I think that, uh, yeah, like, getting readings is good. I, I try to buy a reading about once a year. Um, and I'm actually crazy. Like, I've even called some of those, like, psychic hotline people and, like, actually had a decent experience. Some of them are cringe, but some of them are actually, like, even solid. Like, some of those people who do, like, tarot over the phone or whatever. On oh, those, like, what? Like, some of those are good. I some of them like, are good? Really? Like, yeah, no, I was surprised. So I actually, um, I was, like, I had, I was given, like, a coupon for one of those websites by someone. That's... And I, I did it, and I actually got a good reading from someone. Like, and it was actually, like, correct. Like, I know a lot of those people are kind of, like, a little not great, but I actually got a good one. So I, I don't know, buying readings is fine, like... And there's some really great people who do paid readings who are quite good at it. So I'm, I don't know. Divination also takes a lot less spiritual energy than doing an elaborate ritual on someone. Yeah, I, usually I end up getting like this wonderful situation of like, hey, Dave, can you do a reading for me? And it'll usually be from one of my friends. Because, you know, it's the weirdest thing of, uh, your friends are more likely to ask you for readings than anyone else. Especially if they're also into occultism, it turns out. And usually... Well, there's... Go ahead. There's certain forms of divination that people are better at than others. Like, I can't really do geomancy. I don't really know much about geomancy. So, like, I will message Dave and be like, please do geomancy for me. And Whereas, then I like, will give you, like, a, a two-page report of what happened. It's like, yeah, th this is fucked. There are other forms of divination I know quite well that I would not necessarily ask someone else to do for me, but sometimes I, I don't know. It's in, it, people, it, it's, I, I think paid readings are good. Um, don't go too crazy with it. Like, don't, you know, do them constantly and don't make every decision based on some, you know what I mean, person has told you to tear on the side of the road. Like, have a balance with it, but I, I think they're fine. I'm just going to set up a stand on the side of the road. Like, hey, can I read your cards? No, that's a thing here in New York. There oh, are people who do. That. Yeah. Oh, is that a thing? Yeah, yeah, the they're all over the place. I'm yeah, not well, the some city, of them. So actually, I don't know. Yeah, some of them actually do sit at tables and like sit out all day, and then other ones have like signs. They're like, "Call that's... me and I'll do it." Some of them put like stickers up. Um, yeah, they're, they're like some of them are dirt cheap. I I've gone up to them before. <laughs> I've done it when I there was once I was like on a lunch break and I like just went to one of the like ten dollars for ten minutes tarot people and I was like do it ten dollars for ten minutes is that what it's actually called? <laughs> no yeah well there's a ton that not there's all sorts of I don't remember the name of the specific girl but like they're like really cheap like dirt cheap like <laughs> like stands dirty right? dibs done dirt cheap there we go that's yeah, the yeah. new tarot brand. <laughs> Definitely not the best readings you can get, but, like, I don't know. <laughs> some of them are okay. Some of them are not great. Like, there are some uh, people who do professional divination who are, like, a little bit grifters. But there, there's some out there that are good. But I, I, they, we do have, yeah, tarot on the side of the road, people. That's so weird. <laughs> I, like, one of the things, the first thing I learned how to do when I got into occultism was learn how to do divination. So that's just a thing I'm really at now because you know you're always better at what you start with it's just kind of one of those things because you have the foundation but yeah. i still can't like ever see my like if i was doing tarot and the tarot told me like what should i do and it's like go on the side of the road with a table and start reading people's cards i think i would question my life decisions at that point 
People go up to them, though. Like, they make money. I mean, I don't doubt it. It's just, it's just still weird to me. I don't know. No, we have them in New York. I've never gotten a reading from someone in Vegas. I've only been to Vegas one time and only for a few days. So, I don't know. I guess maybe they have the same thing in Vegas. People also, like, do a lot of, like, crazy stuff on the side of the road. There's a lot of businesses that are just, like, pop-up stands here that are a lot more questionable than the tarot people, so. Oh, definitely. There's actually a scam here. Where, um, in, like, the tourist area, these Buddhist monks go up to people, and they put this, uh, brace, like, this, like, Buddhist bracelet on people, and they say it's free, and then the person's like, oh, thank you, and then they're like, oh, well, you have to donate to our temple now. Um, it's called extortion. Yeah, that's, no, so, like, tourists, okay. in, like, the tourist zones. Yeah, that, that uh, is, uh, it's not okay at all. Yeah, it's kind of kind of scummy, actually. Well, the the thing is, like, with people doing paid esoteric stuff in general, yeah, um, there are good people and they're bad people. Like, there are ways to like. I I don't like the blanket idea that like selling spiritual things is bad. I don't think that's true. Um, but I think that there are some people with really bad practices. Where do I live? I live in New York City. It's in my, uh, I'm in America. It's in my, uh, Twitter bio. Yeah. Dave lives in the abyss. Dave, we do not I, know where Dave. No, I live in upstate New York. I live like in, I live in cold Texas. I live in cold, angry Texas. That's what I call it. So. That's just it's pretty uh, accurate, actually. I, I've been upstate a few times, and I, yeah, pretty much. I like upstate, though. It's very pretty. It's very nice. It's very aesthetically pleasing, is how I like to describe it. But, um, yeah, no, I'm, I am too far north, basically. I am too far north to be in the city, and I honestly hate the city. I You're think... a hater. The city's not that bad. I just prefer the nature. I would prefer trees to buildings. We have trees. You have a tree. We should have more trees. I, I do yeah. agree with that. I think that um, there should be more trees here. But now we have Christmas trees everywhere in public. Because it's like Christmas. New York Christmas decorations are All already right. up everywhere. Yeah, that's... Yeah, I mean... Are Christmas trees really the same thing? It's still a tree. It's still yeah. like... The vibe, the nature. That's true. It is definitely. I don't know. I, I don't think that counts. Seasonal trees is uh... Buffalo, New York. Uh, no, I do not live in Buffalo. New York. I live in the middle of nowhere, New York. If you lived in Buffalo, that I feel like that's sad. That would be I, awful. I deliberately avoid going to Buffalo whenever I have. <laughs> Why would you I've, ever want to live in Buffalo? No, I have Starting literally is a Buffalo resident. I have literally used magic to avoid going to Buffalo three times in my <laughs> life, and it has worked every single time. I have used magic to like literally stop me from having to go to that city. It's awful. I don't know. No, Buffalo's go. a hellhole. I don't know. It's horrible. Oh, yeah, no. It's it's too cold. Too cold and too miserable. And I already live in a place that is too cold and too miserable. But well, Buffalo kind of combines the worst parts about being in the city and upstate into, like, one place. Yeah. If there is, if there is a frozen level of hell, I think it looks kind of like Buffalo with more demons. That's, that's what you I go think. To it's just like a, a crowded day in Buffalo. I would. Oh God, that's that's absolutely. Miserable. It would be absolutely miserable. Oh no. Yeah, no, not not a fan of that. I don't. I would usually use magic to get out of doing things, but I think that is like the one time I have like stopped what I'm doing. Go to the candle shelf, grabbed the like black candles, and it's like, okay, I am not going on this stupid trip that is going to do nothing not but a waste trip. It's my not time. Go to Buffalo. The only reason why you should ever go to Buffalo is if it's like for some like work function that you cannot get out of. Like, 
It's like um there there are a couple places in the US that I like genuinely like have been to that I do not like. And and Buffalo is is up there. Oh yeah. I would say. I actually like Detroit more than Buffalo. I've been to Detroit. Um I lived in the Midwest for like three years. Um and I actually prefer Detroit to Buffalo. I don't hate Detroit. Detroit was like I went to Detroit um uh for like a convention thing and like I actually kind of like like Detroit. It was not it was not I mean like I wouldn't want to live there, but like it was not horrible. Like I liked it more than Buffalo. <laughs> I feel like most places that you go to are just like, man, this place looks really nice, but I would never want to live here. Like, that's 90% of places in the States, I feel like. Yeah, there's some good places, though. Or it's like, well, you know what? It's awful, but it's my slice of awful. Why is Buffalo so bad? Because there is both better city and better not city in the state of New if York. If you wanted city, you would go to New York City. If you yeah. wanted cold, you would go to, or, like, if you wanted the cold, you would go to the rest of the state. But you've combined the cold of upstate with the awfulness of the city, right? And you yeah, have yeah. gotten the advantages season, of neither. I actually kind of like, I like living in the city. People think I'm, like, insane for living in New York City. And there are definitely things about New York that I don't love. I complain about it sometimes on Twitter. Like, yesterday I was in the Trader Joe's, one of the, there's a bunch of them all over the city, but I was in Trader Joe's during, um, like, like 5 p.m. Yeah. and in the fucking Trader Joe's checkout. It was the most madhouse place. Every time I go to Trader Joe's, it's a madhouse because it's way cheaper than all the, all the, for, for those who don't live in New York City, we have like a problem with grocery stores where they're either like bodega corner stores, which are not grocery stores, okay? They're Why not. would you ever, you do not get groceries there. You get like snacks and like coffees. You don't, but they mark them on Google as grocery stores. There's, there's a really viral video of this like transplant guy who was really mad about that. And I'm like, yeah, it actually is kind of annoying. Um, and then there's like Trader Joe's, which is the affordable supermarket in New York City. It's the cheapest supermarket. And then there's like these like independent supermarkets, which are definitely like the support small business things, right? But they are very expensive. I've noticed like going to like any of the supermarket chains, um, even some of those that are chains in the city, they're just a lot. Like it is way cheaper to go to Trader Joe's. So a lot of people who live here go to Trader Joe's for groceries. And so every time you go into one of them, because they're not as many as these freestanding grocery stores, right? It's like a night. It's oh, like yeah. a night. It's it's like purgatory moment. Like especially during hours when it makes sense to get groceries. Like hours when people would naturally do that. Um, but I like it here, and I think metaphysically, there is a like kind of city chaos that is kind of fun to interface with, right? Like there's there's an egregore to the city, and it's just I don't know. There's like a there's like a spirit of the place to it with like the hecticness that's kind of fun actually. I have an actually really good reason for not wanting to be in the city. Specifically <laughs> New York City. Why? Um, you know Astro Cartography, right? Yeah, yeah. My Saturn, uh, I believe it's my Saturn IC is on New York City. Yeah, I wouldn't, then that makes sense. Yeah, I know. It's, it's literally <laughs> like a divine, the stars don't want me to be here reason. Which... You know. No, astral photography is real. Actually, I'm gonna oh, pull yeah. up mine. Not on the chart. I'm not on the the screen. You guys are not seeing my astrology no, information. You're seeing my screen but, because this is my channel. Yeah, and it's on it's... my computer. I'm just gonna look at mine because I have like. Um. Also, I I did actually get my my astrology chart docs, which was I think the funniest thing that's ever happened to me on the internet. Um. Someone who was like a hater of my channel, like found some astrology website where my chart was on and then like released it, which is the most like occultist thing that has ever happened to me. That is, it's like the closest thing occultists can do to be like, here is a copy of the birth certificate. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like that is the occultist birth certificate right there. Like literally. Yeah. Oh. So I'm on. The Astro Astro Seek um, Astro Photography Map, which is like yeah, pretty good. Somewhere. I'm highlighting New York's like I've zoomed, I've run my so it tells me the exact degree or whatever. It's actually a Leo rising city for me, and I'm a Leo rising. Um, it's not any of the major lines though. Um, it's close. It's just it's yeah. I mean this it's like pretty well placed for me. Um, some places I have bad memories in are on really brutal lines though, which is kind of crazy to look at. I need to. Uh, like 
get into astrocartography a little bit. I just know that I live like on my Saturn IC line and it's like, oh joy, I love that for me. Loving that. I used to live on my uh, moon line. That sounds like it would be both really good. Oh, it was like actually the place I lived where I had like the worst uh like mental health period of my life which is really crazy oh, that... it was like a rough spot it was before i got into the esoteric i've talked before like the reason why i got into spirituality is i wanted to self-improve oh, right yeah. i started through like the self-help pipeline like i was in like kind of a uh i i was not like a mess like nothing too crazy but like i, I wasn't in the best place before i got into like this stuff and this stuff made my life like notably better um but like when Definitely. i was at that point before actually it was the place where i also got into esotericism towards the end um, but it was definitely an emotionally loaded place to me. So that's, that's actually quite interesting. Astrocartography is cool. Like you can just like pull this up on the AstroSeq website and type in your information. You could, I guess, learn to like do this manually and like be really good at this stuff, but I'm just going <laughs> to pull it up on the website. Um, if you can actually calculate this stuff yourself, that's incredibly impressive. I love that uh, we can just, like, live in a time where we can just, like, skip all of the really annoying calculations. You know what I mean? Because, like, I hate doing all Like, if I had to do all of the planetary hours stuff, I would absolutely not be doing planetary magic. Because planetary hours are a massive thing. And just having an oh, app on my phone... Okay saves me so much time it's not even funny wait this map gets crazier so my mars line goes right through a city where i had her i remember i was on a trip with someone i had this horrible argument with them oh right on the mars line that's so cool that is really cool yeah no astrocartography is real do not move to cities that are badly placed on it i need to find uh, out where... you can do it on astro seat just look up like astrocartography calculator well, i'm not gonna do it right now for obvious reasons yeah, you're you're you would not want you're gonna be astro chart doxed then. Yeah, uh, well, no, it's the one thing I have set up properly is the uh, name on the yeah, the background name is the one thing that was set up properly. Unfortunately, well, that's kind of all live streaming is a little hectic. I mean, it's it's set up every single week, so if I didn't know how to do this, like that would be the one thing I would need. Just because, yeah want to know that so if something's on my ac line should i go there or no yes go there yeah that'd be a good place like That's lines cool. you want to avoid are like the malefic lines unless they're like in an intersection between like the positive line i guess okay. yeah, so for anyone wondering we are talking about astro cartography there's a so it's like astrology, but it shows you where in the world you're going to have different like issues with your life, basically. It's advanced astrology stuff. It's a good way. It's a good way to understand it, I think. Yeah, basically it like overlays different planetary, basically like, you know, like a map, like a map has a longitude and latitude, latitude lines, right? Like it takes the world map and it overlays the, extrapolates from your chart, like, basically lines that it draws vertical and then the hor they're horizontal but they're more like a swoop pipeline because the way that the maps work but you can basically like look at it and like oh this city is near the mars line that's something marshall yep. it, like reading this stuff is pretty easy calculating it i don't even know how you would begin with that i mean i have no idea i just know that there is an app for it and you should use the app for anything astrological or planetary yeah, I'm excited. The place I'm going is right on my IC, so that's positive, at least. That's, uh, that should be good. Okay, good. Um, should I, be positive. The, line, the closest line to where I live is a Mercury line. That is extremely appropriate. Um, that I'm is extremely right, appropriate. Like, not that far on the map. That's probably like 400 miles in real life. That's not really like on the world map. Like, yeah, that's close. Probably not. I tried to drive to the line. So actually, guys, ascended planetary magic is to draw is to drive to the line, the nearest line of the planet. <laughs> I'm not telling people to do that. That's Instructions crazy. unclear. I have driven into the ocean. What do you mean? Yeah, well, a lot of these lines are literally in the ocean. Like my um, yeah, my one of my Mars lines is just like a straight shot towards like the through the middle of the Atlantic. 
and into the South. That's most of the lines are going to be in the ocean or like a majority of them are. Yeah, a lot of my horizontal lines are through the ocean for a lot of it. I like that they all intersect on Antarctica um, because of this. So if you go to Antarctica, do you just get, like, zapped with every magic? Because That's, <laughs> like, the chakra of the world. So if you go there, you get, like, you download all of the planetary energy. This is what the planets don't want you to know. This is what the Archons... You gotta go to Antarctica um, and ride a boat through the Drake Passage and, like, vomit for ten days. You need to, like, like dog your way across the frozen wasteland of Antarctica to get true gnosis. That's where this is where it is. Yeah, it's it's right we're there. recommending you guys. You guys gotta do it and then tell us what happened. Yeah. I mean I'm slightly better. Uh I believe the point that mine's at is like right under Antarctica actually. Like it's Oh so you gotta go like into like the earth. Like, I need go, to go like, like I need to go to go, Europe like, and like sail up. So I need to go oh, north yeah. of Europe. You know what I mean? Just get on a little, like, raft. Yeah, I, I can just, like, get my coconut. Uh, this is my servitor, Wilson. And that's what we'll do. That's how I'll download True Gnosis. Yeah, you just gotta go to the ocean. Mine is literally on Antarctica. Like, it, it's not visible on this little map, but I know that's where Antarctica is on a map. Like, I know oh. that Antarctica is at the bottom, right? <laughs> it's way at the bottom. It has to be Antarctica. Someone is I, asking if ley lines standard. came up in discussions of where your group trip is going. I would say no, right? Come on my group trip. Come to Cairo with me and Luxor. It's right on my uh, IC line. So okay, so but is the is ley lines involved in the trip? That's the real question. Um, I think it's not right. Like ley line, I. I don't think so, no. Did you guys like plan the ley lines? Did you did you scope out? Did the trip advisor pull out like a secret map and be like, all right, here you go. Here's where you can possibly go based on the, the ley lines of the earth. You know, that's not how my meeting with the travel agency went when what? I like No, I don't believe but, you. Um, yeah, well, apparently it is. I didn't even look at that before I decided we're going there. <laughs> um... There's a lot of calculations that actually went into why I picked where I picked, and it was a lot based on the survey. I'm a very good uh, re respecter of democracy on the internet. Um, That's good. I'm glad. Yeah, but yeah, you guys actually can. Like, this is my shilling. Uh, you actually can go on a trip to Cairo with me in September 2024. We're also going to Luxor, but we're spending most of the time in Cairo. Um, it's on Trova Trip. If you Google Trova Trip, Georgina Rose, you can buy a ticket. Um, and we are doing a group trip. Yes. Uh, also, it's really uh, somebody somebody wants me to fill out the bingo card because there is an Abermelon free space. Uh, don't do the Abermelon in Antarctica. I am I am yes. from experience. Do not do that. Do not. Not that I've done it in Antarctica, but it would be miserable to do it just in Antarctica. More miserable than it usually is. It's it's not exactly the most fun ritual. I remember when I was, like, uh, on, like, a website, like, I sometimes just, like, look up, like, weird travel stuff. Like, this is one of the things that I do. What if people had voted to go to Buffalo? Well, that was not on the poll, and I would have rejected that. I... You could have called me up at that point and been like, Dave, I need you to do magic to cancel the trip, and I'd be like, I got you, don't worry. Because Yeah, basically, is... how it worked is I had a bunch of, like, lists of places you could, like, pick. I mean, I yeah. actually, it was, it was all of the different trips that they um, had, right? And based on popularity of destination with calculations of like price considerations about how many people are willing to pay for whatever, right? Um, Cairo made sense. Just it, We're also going to Luxor. It's uh, a city in South Egypt we're also going to, but um, it made sense based on a lot of different, cal like we, we like looked at, I looked at the data for every single question, like, and then thought about like what, made sense and like so it was it, a lot of thought actually went into the choice um and it was uh, i mean the polls really guided a lot of it but will i be dressed curiously in cairo um i'll have a little bit of my stick but not as hard as i dress on my instagram just for like a lot of reasons um i'll still make sure my fits are cute though it's gonna be very hot so i'm and i'm gonna we're gonna be walking so i'm not gonna be wearing anything too too crazy but i will be wearing fun hats and stuff so i feel like a wide rim like sun type hat. I've been looking at like cute cute ones that are like aesthetic. 
Um, I am a ceremonial Golden Dawn magician, so I wear only t-shirts. Uh, I don't know anything about fashion. The most fashionable decision I've made in the last five years since becoming an occultist is what color shirts to buy. And the answer is all black. Because that's just what Golden Dawn people do. Well, actually, that's very ceremonialist because I remember, like, I've spent time with, like, ceremonial occultists in real life, right? Yeah. And they either are, like, black t-shirt people or, like, really over the top, and there's kind of no middle ground. Um, I've also noticed, for some reason, uh, thelemites have beards. Non-thelemites do not have beards. So. Flip it. Non-thelemites have beards. Because we're all... All the Golden Dawn people are trying to... Uh, beers, you're right. Sorry, yeah, I got that yeah. back. Thelemites don't have beers. You guys have beards. Sorry, yeah, I we do. had my brain. All Golden Dawn <laughs> magicians are trying to imitate Old Man Regardi. All occultists who are like Thelemites are trying to imitate Crowley. That's why you will always see Golden Dawn people with beards just to separate ourselves from the Thelemites. Yeah, Thelema male fashion is maybe not the best. Um, That's a bit of an understatement sometimes, but yeah. Bit of an understatement. Just a little bit. Just a smidge. Yeah. Did I he... will say, Crowley, like, his... I know that the the Zoomers call it now twink death, uh, where men start looking really ugly when they get old, and I think Crowley is a victim of twink death, because Crowley was very attractive when he was young. Like, those pictures of him when he's, like, in college and stuff are, like, really good. And then, like, him old, janky. Janky. Will Thank I be you. posting in Cairo? Yes, I will be posting a lot. Thank you for introducing the phrase twink death to my live stream. That's ve very cool. I've been seeing it a lot on uh, Twitter and TikTok, and I keep seeing these posts. Like, I saw this really funny thread on Twitter where someone said, like, famous, like, dictators and twink death. And I was like, Crowley fits in. Not as a dictator, but, like, Crowley does suffer from twink he death. He fits the twink death aesthetic, is that what you're saying? <laughs> Oh, that, yeah, he is is a victim of twink death. That is, you know what? I'll I'll believe it. I actually have seen younger pictures of Crowley, and he does look. He doesn't look like creepy bald man, right? Oh, you know, there's a specific photo of him that I really like, um, where he's like smoking a pipe, and he has this like kind of like sheer jacket. Oh yeah, it's. And he's, he's like, leaning forward. Like, that's definitely the best Crowley shot, I would say. If you are a Thelemite, you probably know the one I'm talking about. Yeah. I will say, Crowley being so creepy in his old age is why I am not a Thelemite. Because Crowley was creepy enough to look... Crowley was creepy enough to where I was just like, man... I wish that I could learn how to do a magic without creepy bald man. And oh, I actually do you know about my? That, so. Do you know about the painting of Crowley I have in my house? I or do, oh, do, have you told this story publicly or not? I I know about. Yes. It. So I haven't hung it up in my. I recently moved. I switched apartments. I didn't move out of New York. I just moved to a different apartment. Um, because my I was mad at my landlord. And anyways, um, you know, the whole thing. Don't worry about it. Anyways. Well, this is it's a saga the internet doesn't even know about. But yeah. I did move recently, so the Crowley painting has not been hung up in my bathroom again. But it will be. I need okay, to buy so... little command books. But basically, I have a painting of Crowley's face. I have this because um, on Strange Angel, they have this weird thing that was cracking me up the whole series where all the Thelemites had photos of Crowley in their house like he's like a North Korean dictator. And I was like, I've never seen this in a real Thelemite house. Like, I've been to Thelemites apartments and houses before. Like, I've never seen anyone do this. And actually, I went on Instagram and I like looked up like Crowley painting. And I was like, I'll just like print one of these. And there was someone selling one that he had painted for like 50 bucks or something. And so they were like a small account. I actually have a photo of the painting on my, I think I put it on my Instagram. I like promoted this person for it because they were like a tiny artist or whatever. Anyways, I bought it. And they didn't send it to me. I bought it myself. Um, and they were like, oh, you're a big account. That's really exciting. And I was like, sure, yeah, I'll, I'll promote you. I think that's sweet. But I, I got it to hang it in my apartment because I think that's funny. Like, I just yeah. think there's something funny and weird about it. It's very like Kim Jong-un photo in your house in North Korea, right? 
And so I was like, where do I, when I got it, I was like, where do I put it? Right. Cause I live in a pretty small apartment, right? I live in New York. Right. Um, and I was like looking around and I was like, you know, I have a lot of stuff on my walls, except for my filming wall, which I like creep keeping looking like a vague void of the abyss. It's like, you know what? I'm going to put it over my toilet in the bathroom. Because in the bathroom, there's really nowhere else to put it that made sense, where it wouldn't get wet or damaged or whatever. So I was like, how high do I put this? And I was like, no, I need to put this at like male eye level, not at my eye level, because I'm pretty short, if you guys don't know. And I'm like, I'm going to put this literally like if a man is ever peeing in my toilet, he has to stare into Crowley's eyes. Um, it's so yeah. unhinged. Yeah, it is. It's, it's, it's been there for years. I need to hang it up in my new apartment. It's going in the exact same place. Um, especially late at night. Like, if you're in my apartment late at night, you just see Crowley. Because it's it's not like a, like a photorealistic painting of him. It's like kind of like shadowy and it's it's like artistic. Oh, is you know it what like I mean? an artistic? But I, I thought it was... Yeah, you know uh... it is. It's his face. It's a painting of his face. It's just not like photorealistic, right? Okay, yeah, that makes sense. You get to stare into his eyes. You get to sit there at an artistic representation of Crowley. When you're going yeah. to the bathroom. That's... Yeah. Right at male eye level. That's horrifying, like, actually. It's great. This is, like, the best thing about my apartment. People... Actually, people will comment on it if they ever, like, are guests in my apartment. Like, why is there a man's face over your toilet? And I'm like, it's Crowley? It, I can I can educate you on Salima now. Um, men That's the conversation get starter. No, men get wigged out by it. They're, they're like, what the fuck? Every single time. It's hysterical. The effect that I was going for worked. It did what I wanted to. You really can't. I don't even know where to start with that. That's just. Like, yeah, yeah. Probably does that kind of stuff to people. Like, confuse and concern them. That's what I mean. Because. What are you gonna do when you're staring? Like, it's midnight. You have to go to the bathroom. You go to the bathroom and you just see a, a dark, shadowy picture of Crowley. Oh, I can make it better. So whenever I burn candles for multiple days at a time, which, chat, I'm not recommending you do this. This is a fire hazard. This is advice you should not take. Oh, don't do that. Don't do that, chat. But, but. but if you're going, if, 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 when I do it, I'm not recommending this. This is, this is, a, you should have a critical support for a Georgina Rose moment. I put them in my, like, bathtub, right? Because it's the most, like, fire-safe place to put them, right? Yeah, it's on the so There's nothing flexible in a tub. And so what happens is at night, like, I just leave them burning for a couple of days, which, by the way, chat, you're not supposed to do this. Everyone who sells seven-day candles will tell you not to do it, but I do it anyways. So it's, like, lit up by... So it's generally my bathroom at night when I do this is, like, very creepy because you have this, like, candlelight coming out of the tub. And so if you go to the bathroom... I want to know how many Crowley's people... Crowley's face gets kind of, like, weirdly, like, side-lit by it. <laughs> it's so good. It's so good. This is, like, the best detail in my apartment. I should honestly be on one of those, like, uh... You know, like, the, the show you're, like, like archaeologist... Like, what is it? Not archaeology architecture like books like of like decor it's just that yeah. of my creepy bathroom at night with Crowley's face like staring at you do you do do you still do rituals in your bathroom okay look look so do you do i still do rituals in my bathroom so for context of people who don't know uh when i first started being a practitioner um i had a i lived with a roommate i was in school and um uh, basically, I did the rituals in secret in the bathroom, right? Like, I would lock the door and, like, run the tub water and do my creepy rituals, right? I did this for years. Uh, she actually caught me, and she was actually raised by Wiccans, crazy enough. Um, and she thought, like, I, what I was doing was, like, evil occultism and not, like, uwu, love and light, right? She's very love and light. And so she actually put a post-it note on the door that said, please stop summoning demons in the bathroom. And she would actually get mad at me for this pretty regularly. We had, like, arguments about this. Um... <laughs> But yeah, so now I don't do many rituals in the bathroom, but there is actually something comfortable for me about doing weird rituals in the bathroom. There's something, Luca, it's a calm space. So occasionally I do do stuff. If, look, if I'm doing any sort of messy spell that has a lot of ingredients, I do actually do it in the bathroom. Are you, okay. There that are is... certain rituals you should not do in the bathroom. Like if you're doing like certain things, like don't do that. Cause it is like an unclean okay. place. It's like, but. I'm going to defend this theologically. So 
So according to Islamic lore, jinn live in the bath, like jinn live in toilets. So if you're doing jinn magic, there's a decent reason to actually do it in the bathroom. Uh, but maybe don't invoke angels in the bathroom. <laughs> Oh, you're yeah. not you're not supposed to I can't speak on Jin, but I can speak on angels because uh cough cough Patreon exclusive stuff this month is an angel evocation guide. Cough cough. I actually uh, did it in the bathroom when I was new because I had to do everything in the bathroom because I was like yeah. practicing in secret. If you're practicing in secret, doing uh magic in the bathroom is actually a great great Oh, that's a great to place to like if you need if you're in public uh, pro pro tip from the amateur magus: If you are in public and you need to do like a quick magical thing, go to the bathroom. Go to the bathroom. Yeah, doing, sneak like, out. Like, nasty bathroom. I keep my bathroom very very clean. By the way, yeah. guys. <laughs> yeah. But um. But yeah, you can do a bathroom. It's not ideal, but it does. If you're trying to summon quiet. holy stuff, you're not supposed to do that. However, if you are you doing don't... cleansings, those should always be done in the bathroom usually. Um. Yeah, like I would ritual do... baths, that kind of thing. Yeah, ritual baths are a whole thing. They're, those are good. Yeah, I, I I guess if you're using demon stuff, you can do it in the bathroom. But bathrooms are unclean, unholy places, fundamentally. Oh, yeah. If you have in the bathroom, you do it in the bathroom. If you're doing something like invoking the sun, do it in your, like, normal room. And, like, actually clean before you do things. Like, I don't know, like... I, I, people like people were kind of like memeing on me for repeatedly telling people to like clean their clean, clean their bathrooms. Clean your clean their ceremonial spaces. Yeah, like clean your space, but like it actually does like kind of matter. Like it doesn't need to be like um perfect or whatever, but your space is a microcosm of what you're doing. So oh, if yeah. you're doing in like a really messy place, like that does have somewhat of a negative impact. And I do believe like a clean home respects the spirits of the place, right? It respects your house spirits, it respects the land spirits, and it just kind of makes you feel more clean and together. And right? it just I feel like it just kind of I don't know, it helps, and I do actually recommend it. And if you want to, like, clean, like, something I do when I do, like, I deep clean less frequently. I do, like, tidying all the time, but, like, I deep clean about, like, you know, a couple, once every two weeks, once a month, depending, right? Yeah. And I leave offerings to Vesta after I do my deep clean, right? I feel like that's really That's actually cool. a really smart idea. Yeah, it, it, like, ritualize it. And you can do it at specific times of the month. Like, for, like, men, I would do it at the new moon. For women, okay... I'm sorry, Dave. After your cycle, oh, no. after your cycle ends, you should do your deep cleansing. I'm just saying. That's all I'm gonna say. But yes, a cult Jordan Peterson. He's right about the clean your room thing. Certain other things not right about, but he's definitely right about that. Okay, <laughs> actually, I'm gonna back this up. He is right about it. He doesn't do it. So what you should do is listen to him and do what he says, not what he does. Because if you look at his office, his office looks like an absolute mess. Like, yeah, straight I mean. Up. Generally, Jordan Peterson has said some interesting stuff about Jung and archetypes, but his other mess I think some of his other messages are, are pretty pretty bad. I, I don't I think I argued with him. I argued in his replies once on Twitter, I think. Um, so I don't know. I think you, his... you, think you can agree with like some of what people say without wholesale getting into it. You know oh, what I mean? Yeah. Like I don't I... agree with a lot of people, but when I agree with people, it's like usually on I think I straight up said at one point, if I 100% agree with you on everything, something is wrong. Something is no, very wrong. Could. Like, I think I'm on record as saying that, too. I've told people not to 100% agree on stuff that I say. Like, I've said that to even, like, my patrons and my, like, like group chat members, like, my, my um Discord group members, right? I've been like, hey, like, you can disagree with me. That's, like, okay. I mean, if you're going to disagree with me, not please obligated. disagree me with me on something that is, like, not objectively correct, right? You know what I mean? Like... Yeah, well, there's certain things, like, I get really annoyed with people disagreeing. I actually got in a fight with someone on Twitter the other day because they said that the Romans didn't exist. And I... <laughs> a little bit. Wait. Yeah, so I was thinking about, like, Rome, that? right? Like, pagan Rome. And they're like, well, the Romans aren't real. Rome... The objective... Of all the groups of people to say that isn't real, that is the one that, no, they are the most real. They're arguably more real than us. There, there's your hot take of the day. Romans are more real than modern society. How about that? No, I believe the Romans are real. I'm like a, I'm like a Rome believer, actually. I, I think the... 
I think Rome is is real. And I think that there there are people on the internet, like there's several people who do believe that Rome is not real. This is actually a whole conspiracy theory on the internet. You guys were not cursed with this knowledge. There's a, a giant conspiracy theory online that Rome is not real. Um, and that Rome is fake. It, it's it's propagated by this TikTok account, Mom Lineal, who is a st- staunch Rome denier. And I am a Rome believer. I believe Rome is real. And I think if you deny that Rome is real, you're stupid. But there are a lot of people who don't. No, this person's being serious, by the way. They, like, got mad in oh, my they, reply. Are they, they actually, talk- like, a... Rome no, they believe person? it. This person was serious. They like in my replies were oh, like, no. um, you your brain cells don't because I said they're they have a room temperature IQ, which would be a <laughs> I okay, um, well. which, I mean that seventies might be maybe generous. They might be lower actually. This person's IQ might be like fifty. Um <laughs> but yeah, and then they told me that I don't have like brain cells that connect to each other because I don't like I don't know. Um Oh, no. no, but they kind of, like argued it, and I went on their Twitter, and I'm like, okay, this is a crazy person. They might actually believe uh, that. No, there are people who actually believe Rome isn't real. The Rome isn't real thing has become a bit of a meme, but like there are like people who are that stupid in this world. Yes, I think the one take about Rome that I actually agree with is um, caring a lot about Roman history is the pumpkin spice latte of history. Yeah, but, like, Roman history is good, though. I like Rome. I'm a Rome fan. I talk about, like, Hellenistic stuff. Like, I, I like... I'm a Rome appreciator, so... I mean, but I also like pumpkin spice lattes. I do... I do enjoy them. I enjoy... So that's uh, why you like Rome, because it is the pumpkin spice latte of history. Yeah, and pumpkin spice lattes. Are you saying pumpkin spice lattes are bad? Are you hating on uh, the delicious... It's it's good. I am, I am hating on... Pumpkin spice latte. Yes. That being said, I have actually drinking pumpkin spice lattes before, and I'm like, I'm not gonna order this like ever. And it was just given to me, so I never ordered. It. No, but, but did like, you like? It? Did I'm, you like it? I didn't hate it. I drank it. So it was like, okay, okay, well. So you understand? Pumpkin Roman legionaries. He gets it. He's just denying. I, I am fully denying it. I refuse. I refuse to... I don't know. I just... I'm not a well, fan I, uh, of, like, the, the whole the pumpkin spice latte culture. Well, it's a kind of a wholesome culture. Like, they get memed on, but, like, those people are enjoying the seasons. They're having fun. I don't know. I, Let them... You know what? You get to exist, and you get to enjoy yourselves, and I don't get mad that you exist and enjoy yourselves. How about that? Like, I don't care that you guys exist. I don't care the pumpkin spice latte exists. I am more angry. If you had to choose, like, a seasonal thing that I absolutely despise, I okay. absolutely hate that Christmas now begins at November 1st. Yeah, I don't like that either. I feel like it's, it's am... actually disorienting, honestly. Okay, I am a... This is gonna sound like I'm, I'm a sinful person for two seconds. Give me a second. I am a Thanksgiving enjoyer, not the food section. I hate like the whole feast of Thanksgiving concept. I don't know. But like, I, I every, feel like every Thanksgiving food is kind of mid, actually. No, 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 no. Because I use it as that is my offering day of the year. I like, uh... every year I go into my altar space, right? I have cleaned it the day or two before, and I go ahead, which is another reason why this month is so messed up, I go ahead and I do all of my offerings. I get, like, a fancy plate out. I get, like, all of the cigars, the whiskey, everything. I do up everything, and that is my entire thing. And then I go do with my relatives and eat food afterwards and literally all i do is i invite every spirit i have worked with every force that has helped me and everything that has been good to me over the course of the year and the only rule i have is don't cause any problems for you for me or anything else involved and that like it's just a gigantic 
I don't know. I don't know what you would call it. It's basically like a gigantic thank you party for everything that I've worked with up to that point through the year. Which is... Sense. That makes sense why you actually like Thanksgiving. Because you've, like, esotericized it. For me, like, I don't know. Thanksgiving, I enjoy it as, like, a day. But I don't, like, get hype leading up to Thanksgiving. You know what I mean? Like, I... On Thanksgiving Day, I'm like, this is nice. This is cozy. It's not, like, I like cooking. It's nice to cook for people. But it's not something that I, like, get hype about in the same way I get, like, hype about, like, Christmas and Halloween. You know what I mean? It's kind of... I feel like Thanksgiving, it's, it's, it's hard for Thanksgiving to perform because it's between two, like, really amazing holidays, right? And it's just, Mm -hmm. like, it looks mid in comparison. You know what I mean? Thanksgiving is only good if you turn it into a big thing. Like, I've done that. Because I'm actually not the big... I love Halloween. I love Christmas. But now it's like, okay, now it's cutting into my, like, the one big ceremony that I do for this month. And it's like, I I don't know how I feel about that, right? Do you do moon phase stuff? Like, do you, like, do, like... I don't. Because I do all the moon phase stuff. I actually, like, am very lunar. My calendar, like, my little... I use a planner to remember anything. Um, I need to do that. (laughs) <laughs> I will not. I will not. I am it. more solar than I am lunar, honestly. And on my my little paper calendar that I use to keep track of my life, um, it's actually a, like a lunar calendar. It's also, like got the moon phase. It's I love the moon phases. I know all the time what moon phase it is. I track it. I like base my month around the moon. Like I'm a big, big lunar cycle appreciator. So I get big ritual every month. Yeah, I don't do a big ritual every month, but, like, I am much more of a... I am a solar person to my core, so I am a solar and Jupiterian person. Actually, if you look at my chart, it's, like, solar and Jupiter focused. Like, those are the two strongest planets for me. Tied. And so, I go ahead... I go ahead, and I turn Thanksgiving, which is supposed to be the most Jupiterian holiday... Yeah. supposed to be into like its own thing because if you don't know Christmas has connections to Saturnalia so I consider that Saturnian wait you know my chart what would you because I've gotten different opinions from people what would you say my strongest planets are based on my chart you know it you have it you have my astrodox oh god I do have your astrodox um I would need to check it again and uh, okay well we can do that another time I'll do it after the stream I'll do it after the stream yeah. No, it's all good. We'll look at that another time. But I, people have told me different things. I know what planets are, like, just on my own knowledge of astrology. I'm not an astrologer, guys, just for reference. Like, I know astrology. I post about astrology. But my relationship with astrology is astrology is, like, a thing I work with metaphysically. I have a very different, like, the way I interface with astrology is very different than the way, like, a predictive astrologer is. Because I don't, I do planetary, I do planetary remediation. I invoke the planets, I invoke the spiritual planets, but I'm not a predictive astrologer. Which has actually caused some interesting discussions about when I actually do discuss planets. Because I discuss it in a way that's a little different than a predictive astrologer would. So yeah. sometimes people people have interesting thoughts on it. Usually when you are, whenever something is messed up is going on, and you're like, is this astrological? I get a DM. That's what happens. I, yeah, I don't know. You know when my, my chart's bad because I DM you. I, like, hit you up for a reading. And then usually um, it's like, this is the current situation in your astro chart recommendation. Yeah, well, because the, the, the grimoires that I actually work with are actually very different than the grimoires that you work with. Yeah. We both do grimoires, but we do very different grimoires. And all my grimoires are planetary grimoires. They're just, it's not predict. I just don't do predictive astrology. I don't do transits and stuff. Uh, I, I can tell you how to do magic on an eclipse or not do magic on an eclipse and like how to like i know the lunar mansions i know a lot like i know all the lunar mansions i know what lunar mansions are the moon signs all that it's just it's a different i just interface astrology a little bit differently but sometimes i am a cancer but i am a 12th house sun so i am i think (laughs) that my sun sign is 12th which is kind of an l to be honest that is an l yeah, it's also why I don't think I come across like a very typical uh, cancer because my it's in the 12th house. Yeah. If you get to know me, I actually seem a lot more like a cancer to people who know me closer. Yeah, that's normal for so. Um, that's actually normal because usually you come across more as your ascendant until people get to know you, then you come across as your sun sign. Like I, I usually come across I- as very Sagittarius, and then. I people get to know me and then they know that I am an Aries 
but I have it in fourth house, so I'm like an Aries Cancer mix, which is actually even more of an L. Yeah, my ascendant is uh, Leo. Yep. Yeah. As, uh, which... as your go to astrologer. I think I act more like a Leo, which is my rising sign. You People know. find it a lot of surprising. And I actually have Elium in Gemini in my chart. Everyone now understands, Perk. <laughs> Everyone who is an astrologer in the chat, all five of us, like, yep, yeah, I get it. But now, it makes total sense. Yeah. I have a bunch of Gemini in my chart. You have, like, Sun and Air, or no, I'm Sun and Air. You have, like, Sun and Cancer, and then, like, everything else is in, like, a, an extra virgin sign. Yeah. Yeah. I would say I'm an extrovert. I will say, though, I, I do kind of run out of social battery after a certain point. Like, I'm an extrovert to a point, if that makes sense, which I think is most people. Oh, that's normal. Um, there's balance in that, though. I'm not... You know, you don't want to be, like, falling off the wall with certain signs. Like, my chart is really air-heavy. Like, that's the most dominant element in my chart. And so, like, I have to consciously, like, try to balance that out, right? And, like, ground myself. Um, because if you have a very air heavy chart like me, you have a tendency to get very in your head, very ungrounded, almost kind of like detached from the material world, yeah. and, like just caught up in the world of ideas. And that's something you have to be very aware of and doing magic to kind of, you know, work with. If you're like me, you have a very air chart, right? Oh. I have air, fire and all this stuff, right? Work with something like nature oriented. Like one of the, like for me, like one of the spirits I work with that I've been trying to work with more is something like literally like grounded in the earth. Cause you need that balance or you're going to be like off the cups. And so actually how I recommend, I, I, since I don't do predictive astrology, what I recommend for people is for magical purposes, for ritual purposes, look at your chart and like see what there's a lot of, and then work with what's not that. And like, try to like balance it out. Um, yep. So I'm a believer in remediation. Um, have you? I don't know if the chat's aware of astrological. Is it talked about a lot? Do most people know astro astrological remediation? Yay or nay? You would know uh, that, Dave. Nay. nay. Okay, so this is a bit of planetary magic that's like base level beginner planetary magic. You don't even, it's not even really magic. Uh, just the idea of remediation, which is basically like when you're having a, either you're deficient in something or you're having a bad relationship with something in your chart or something planetary like like, for me, I was lacking on anything Venusian for a while. And so I've been remediating Venus. And the way that you would say, I'm going to do Venus, because that's what's been going on in my sphere. So, right, if you're going to remediate Venus, what you would do is do tasks that are ruled by Venus. Like, curl your hair, dye your hair, do something like that. Or, like, if you're trying to remediate Mars, you would work out, right? I've, I've told workouts yeah. is obvious example. If you're trying to remediate Saturn, you would make a big schedule or do something that requires discipline, you're trying to, it goes on and on and on. If you're trying to remediate the mood, the moon, you know, process some of your emotions, have a cry session, something like that. And doing these things that relate to this body and energy will affix you to it and kind of like calm you down with it and balance you out. So like if you have like a mercury, really horrible mercury transit, right? You could do, and this is often how we recommend remediation. I tend to do it like a balancing your base level planet thing. But many people when they are doing transit planetary magic stuff, right, they have a really horrible Mercury transit, they will do Mercury remediation and say, like, write something, right? That would remediate Mercury. You can get very creative with it. There's no real limits on this. And this is kind of magical, but it's not ritual. It's, like, another way to interface with things. Very, very beginner. Not not anything that you need to, to worry about. Um, it's very easy really to do, it. but you need to, like, actually know what the planets are so you can actually do it. Also, keep in mind that if you are... If you do have quite a lot of a particular element in your chart, you will have certain tendencies. Like, I actually have a lot of fire and earth, but no water. I have no water in my chart. You can see that? Yeah, I can see that. Yeah. I have, like, no water in my chart. So usually I end up having to, you know, I end up having to do watery activities to, like, stay hydrated on a spiritual level, which usually in the summer involves like swimming but i also just have the natural tendencies of fire and the tendencies of earth and for those of you who are wondering what the tendencies of earth are because you can tell what the tendencies of fire are 
uh, inertia. Inertia is a big one. So for anyone out there with a lot of Earth in their chart, like a lot of Taurus, a lot of Virgo, a lot of Capricorn, you're going to naturally, if you stop doing stuff, you're going to enter a death spiral. I know this from both experience and watching it. Don't do that. And if you're a fiery person, uh, learn to chill out because you will burn out eventually. And if you have like a specific thing in that element, like think about how that as that part of your life is affected by that. Like if you have, say, like Venus and an Earth sign, right? Think about if your relationship to the Newsian things through that frame. And that is very important because you can go through and... And it can always be a little bit different. Like, I'm a big advocate of occultists and everyone in general, but specifically occultists learning how to cook. And part of that is because I have Mercury and Taurus, which I view, it, and Venus and Taurus conjunct, I view it as when you are learning how to cook, you are learning how to make a piece of art that feeds both your body and soul. Which is, yeah. why, which is why you should know how to cook. Also, yeah. because it's just a really That's good skill. Fun. Yeah, it is also an important life skill. You kind of need to know how to do that to some extent. Um, you don't need to be great. You need to know how to do it. I'm also like, I know it like gets into like fluffy bunny oo woo territory, but like there is some truth to the kitchen magic stuff, right? Like I know there you get chicken types like get really into it and like make that their whole practice. And I don't think it should be your whole practice. But like there, like what you eat does affect you spiritually. Like there are certain foods, like certain like herbs, right? We know herbs all have correspondences. Yep. If you consume a lot of an herbs correspondence, it can affect you magically. And you can kind of consecrate food to some extent, right? Like, we were talking about the pumpkin spice latte earlier. Actually, the spices in pumpkin spice are all, really, prosperity spices. They mm. are, if you want to cheat in your luck spell, it's the season. Go to the grocery aisle, go pick up <laughs> some pumpkin spice. I know that I don't like it. However, I love using it in money spells. I think I actually do mention that in the money. I think yeah, I really lot just have like paper McCormick spice. It's great. Yeah, everyone uses the McCormick ones. That was like a meme for a while. Um, it's, it's they just so uh, started sponsoring cult creators, and a bunch of cult creators were like tagging them and being like, like they're in their like spells. And McCormick spice has actually liked a few of the posts, which was really really funny. Um, on. The um, I also, I remember I got liked by, um, this is, like, weird. Like, whenever brand, like, branded accounts interact with me, it's very strange. Oh, um, yeah. but I posted about, do you guys know the, the soap in the organic grocery stores, the Dr. Bronner's that have, like, the schizo rants on them? What? Spaceship Earth. Oh, do you not know about this? Okay. There's this Give me organic the lore. soap company called Dr. Bronner's, and their bottles don't have art. They have this really long essay on them that goes around the whole bottle. It's in the tiniest font. And most people don't ever read this, right? Okay. If you read it, you can go to any, like, Whole Foods near you and get this bottle and just read it in the grocery store. It's this, like, crazy rant about, like, Spaceship Earth. It's, like, an entire religious theology. And I did some research on the people who run Dr. Bronner's, and the guy who runs it is basically just, like, this, like, like basically this, like, New Age, like, guru leader guy who wanted to promote his ideas, so he just made a soap brand. What? Yeah, yeah, no, if you read, and they're, like, really popular soaps because they're good. Like, they're, like, they're the, like, 50 in one soap, but you use that thing oh, for uh, yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah, and it, like, actually, like, has all these, like, conspiracies, and it's, like, wild. It's just wild experience. So, and I posted on Twitter, like, a Dr. Bronner's bottle I had, and I was, like, shout out to at Dr. Bronner's for making the, the schizo-pilled soap. It was something like that. And they liked my tweet and then retweeted it, like, on their brand account. Uh, they're my mutual. They follow me on Twitter. That's um, unhinged. That's... I yeah, yeah. The shout Dr. out Bron to Dr. Bronner's, I guess. I don't. I, uh, I don't agree with his whole rant because it's just like crazy. Um, oh, but no. it's so funny. It's some of it. Like there was this. The, the... <laughs> he has a, an upload. Wait, there's an upload of the entire logo text on his website where you can you can read it. Um, it's supposed to heal Earth. Yeah. Can you send it to me? Yeah, yeah. It's just, wild. Just DM it to me. Yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll DM it to you. It's it's really good. It, I think that's pretty crazy to put. Uh, yeah. Are you pulling it up? I'm 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 gonna pull it up. Yeah, give me. I pull it up on your phone because there there are a bunch of uploads of it. Don't do the heel. They're all different. Like different bottles have different text on them. 
Um, okay, so Dr. This Bonner. This is a random one off of Reddit. This oh is my one god, of this looks this yeah, it's is a wallet. Why? I put it in your DMs, like one of them. Yeah, okay. Yeah, you want the points. Yeah, yeah. Absolute cleanliness is godliness. Who else but God gave man love that can speak mere dust to life? Poetry uniting all one, all brain, all life. Who else but God lifts in children, eternal father, eternally one? What? Okay, then so Einstein, after Nazis and communists united, proposed space bombs to destroy us all, unless we learn about the moral ABCs to unite the all in one God faith. Okay, and then there's like a rant about Moses, Buddha, Jesus, Muhammad, and that's all one religion. So it's kind of like army eight. of principles by those paint. What? What? A human being works hard to teach love his enemy to unite all mankind free, or that being is not yet human. So go to the second mile, hold the other cheek brave, not meek. For we're all one or none, all one, exceptions, eternally none, absolutely none. What is this? What? It's crazy. <laughs> they have different logos, too. They're not all the I same. Am... Like, there's, like, variances of it. They believe in this thing called, like, spaceship Earth. Like, this is a big point. What? Um... Shout out to Dr. Bronner's uh, Magic Soaps. Uh, I am now a believer in Spaceship Earth, I guess. What is it? What people is in this have in their shower, Dave. So it's it's occultist approved. This goes back to what we were talking about earlier with the shower magic. Go, no, it's you... good soap, by the way, guys. Is you it actually, good soap? Have like, actually? Like, well, yeah, no, it's actually good. Like, you can do like all sorts of crazy stuff with it. If you use it um in the shower, though, you need to dilute it a little bit. Um, oh, that's, just because. I mean, yeah, it's you, eighteen and one. Apparently, I don't know yeah, why. You clean your house too, like your dishes. I don't trust. This that. Is also, by the way, I would actually, if they sponsor me, like I would do it. Like I, I would do that in a second. I would like ask them to be like, please, please. Doctor Bronner's like, hit us up. We will read so the entire funny. logo. We, we it's will so read good. The entire thing. It's on their like bars. Their everything they sell has this the skits. The various there there are a few uh, rants on them. That that's so unhinged. That is. It's one way to get your message out there. I guess. I guess I respect the commitment because like it did become a popular brand. Like they're in like grocery stores and stuff. But I mean, good. You know what? Come for the the eighteen in one soap. Stay for the schizo rant. Is not the motto I expected to be adopting this year. But you know what? That's, that's that what I'm, I'm pretty sure they follow me on Twitter. I know they've retweeted me before. I probably could get them to do it. You could sponsor video when I'll be like I'll do it for free. I just want to talk about your soap. I want to get an excuse too. <laughs> I will do a full soap review, please. Okay. <laughs> New I'm, review. I, I've only ever reviewed books. I should review. I've reviewed books. Oops. Good. Well, that's like the only thing occultists review. I feel like. Like, what else can you review? If, you, like, I, if, if oh, any I candle to... companies are out there, I will review your candles. Sponsor me. I need more, and I need something to review. I have reviewed a candle. Yeah, I realized I was sent candles once to review them, and they were good. They burnt. You know what I mean? Yeah, they burnt. Yeah, they. Yeah, they burnt down. Yeah, no. they lit. Caught on fire. They did good. everything a candle needs to do. Ten out of ten. I think that say, that's our metric for candles now, though. I will say I have a hot take. Candles about can so, you have a hot take about candles. Okay. Yeah, I have a hot take. Um. So, basically, I've noticed at occult stores the most expensive candles are always the beeswax ones, and I hate them. I do not like the yellow beeswax candles. They burn way too hot they're way overpriced i just don't think they're worth it i, I think that the, the chime are fine the normal ones are fine they burn so hot if you accidentally like get wax on you it hurts like crazy oh, like oh. do you do you have any experience making your own candles or no a wax on my like floor on my hand or whatever by accident because i'm just not always the greatest yeah um so I, the beeswax ones like literally horrify me i got one on my hand once and it hurt so bad and i was like no why are you so expensive do you know? Like they pay the bees. It's not like they're like like factory employees. They are. No one's. They're, they're like factory employees. 
Yeah, but they don't get paid for it. So they're kind of like, I guess they're like like average Shein employee, though, to be honest. They get paid in existence. That's what happens. They get paid in existence. I don't get what's expensive. That's just what I'm saying. They're really, every occult store I've been to that sells them, they're like, yeah, I'm just on uh, on Google. The cheapest one is 15 bucks. Some of these are like $100. Okay. Yeah, $200 for a candle set. What the right. fuck? All right, I'm just going to spill the deep war. Ready? Chat, if you are ever making your own candles, right, they work better. If you can't afford to make your own candles, they literally sell five pound blocks of wax that you can just dye and you can make your own candles. The candle companies don't want you to know this because it's an absolute pain in the ass to do, but you can do it. And... If you buy beeswax, a one pound block of beeswax costs like 20 bucks. So they're completely scamming us with the overpriced beeswax candles. This is like a scam we've uncovered. Oh, it's even worse than that. Because you know what you, if you're an occultist, you know what you should be using beeswax for? Cool wax tablets. Mm. As a John D. enjoyer. Um, I've made own herbs and oil stuff like i do all that myself most of the time occasionally i buy them but a lot of times i make my own oils and i've made like tinctures all that i have never made candles i'm a fake fan fake i candle. only make my own can i only make my own candles when it's something i need to make sure it's done right you know what i mean Very yeah rarely will i make candles but if i do make candles that candle works like if i make a black candle that candle is going to be Saturnian as hell because I have taken time out of my busy Saturday to go ahead in the hour of Saturn and like melt all the wax and melt all the, you know, the various things and just put it all together just because that's just how it is. With my herbal stuff, I tend to time it off stuff like that. Oh yeah. I, I time all my candles for that. And um, I had the, oh God, I had the funniest experience. So I don't know how often this gets to happen with people. But I specifically got a custom order from somebody I know. And they wanted, they were like, hey Dave, can you make me some green candles? And like, okay, what do you need green candles for? I need green candles for money, right? Green candles for money. This is not a uncommon thing. Green is the color of money here in the States. And so it's like, okay, green candles for money. So I make the candles, I make them six green candles, and then they proceed to do something that is absolutely amazing. You know what it is? Yeah, so I used one of your candles, and it did something weird, and it's like, what do you mean? Well, I used it to banish somebody out of my life, and they made it so that I don't owe them any money. So I got to watch that, and it's like, you know, you know... How often do people get to see what their clients are using their candles for? You know what I mean? That's great. I love that. But also... But also, like... Guys, if somebody makes you a candle for a specific purpose, please don't use it for anything else. If you go and get a custom magic candle, please use it for what that candle is supposed to be used for. Because otherwise it's going to be weird and you're going to be confused because I know you didn't cleanse it beforehand. How many people actually cleanse their, like, candles and stuff before they use them? Nobody. I don't I, do that. I do. I do, actually. That's, uh... Oh, well, you're, you're, you're so good. You're, you're winning the occultist game. Well... You're, you're true ascended epissimus. 90, 93rd degree epissimus. Do you remember the, let me find this. Wait, there's a specific thing I want to read. Okay, right, yeah, give me one second. All right, yeah, no, so. Keep, keep I'll, I'll read this when I find well, it. Well, I'll explain why I do it. So, um, there's a way, and I have, like, a bunch of stuff on candle magic, so I'm not going to go into that here, but. Okay, I, I found it. Okay, I, I'm, okay, go. This is a, a, my favorite occult post of all time. What the fuck did you just fucking say about me, you little witch? <laughs> I graduated. Oh, God. <laughs> Hold on. And I've been involved in numerous evocations of my Holy Guardian Angel, and I have over 300 confirmed conjurations. I am praying 
Hey, Shadon, top exorcist in the entire Hermetic Order of the Golden Dawn. You are nothing to me but another New Age hippie. I will curse you with the precision, the likes of which have never been seen before in the astral pain. Mark my fucking words. You think you can get away with those saying those incantations to me over the internet? Think again, witch. As we speak, I am activating my secret network of sigils across the USA, and your crystal supplier is being traced right now, so you better prepare for that banishment, hippie. The banishment that wipes off the pathetic little things you call your rituals. You're spiritually dead, neophyte. I can invoke anywhere, anytime, and I create a safe Face it for 700 ways, and that's just with the lesser banishing ritual of the pentagram alone. Not only am I trained in banishing, but I have access to a tool and a set of elemental weapons, and I will use them to the full extent to wipe your miserable faces off the continent, you little Wiccan. If you only could have known the holy retribution your clever incantation was about to bring down on you, maybe you would have held your fucking pentagram, but you couldn't, and you did it, and now you're feeling the rule of three, you goddamn fool. I will evoke fury all over <laughs> the rule of three. Fucking curse neophyte. Okay, that was you when you said that you cleanse your candles. Okay, okay. I actually do <laughs> cleanse my candles, but... That much. That was in the text. That's, yeah, that's that was I... a... Okay, for those of you who are wondering, that is a modification of an ancient copy pasta. So that is a meme. That is an ancient meme that has been it's adapted so for our community. Um, no, but it's so good. <laughs> it is amazing. So... Also, for those of you wondering, you can literally just, like, throw a little bit of salt and, like, take your candle to the kitchen sink and just, like, run it underwater. Don't get the wick wet, obviously. But you can just run it under a little bit cold water and, like, imagine light going into it and that will cleanse the candle. It's super easy. And you want to put your own energy and your intention into the candle before you burn it if you do that. But, um... Also, I feel called out by that copy pasta because I realize that I do actually have the full set of elemental weapons. I actually do. I'm not gonna make a joke about the the fire wand. No, I will I hold back. No, 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 no. Elemental you... weapon. I'm just saying. Okay, look, look. I know the Golden Dawn is in a cold order, but mm -hmm. why does the aesthetic so bad? Like the the Golden Dawn Golden Dawn core is not it. Okay. Okay. I blame Mathers' his wife. Entirely. That's, it. That's all I'm gonna say. I blame Mathers' wife entirely. Because... It's not a good aesthetic. It's, it's just a not... terrible aesthetic. The only thing that's kind of cool is, like, the... Whenever people make their rooms... You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Like, the rooms... Oh, the all, Temple of the Adepti? Yeah, that's actually cool when people build that in their house and stuff. And, like, do that and commit. That is the only part of Golden Dawn Core I think is actually... That actually... It's actually kind of sad because Golden Dawn Core is like 99% oh. terrible. And then like the Temple of the Adepti, which is super great. Yeah. A lot of occult orders may have the best aesthetics. We need to work on that. We need to make like updated like towel robes that like look cool. Golden um, Dawn to when? No, we need to make them look cool. We need to like re redo it. Um, to make them look, because there's this, this, there's a few people online who have made their own like ritual robes and like designed them that look like actually oh, yeah. very cool. Um, so it's possible, it's doable to make cool ritual robes. Yeah, we can do better than this, guys. We, we can. can level up as a community. We can, in fact, look fashionable while doing cool and functional magic. We yeah, and like I'm a fashion girly, right? Like I really like fashion. You guys know this if you follow my Instagram or honestly just even watch my videos. Like I, I like fashion. We need to make the robes better. Cause like I have never done the Thelema e-girl thing of like taking photos or like any like occult e-girl thing of like taking like robe photos. I think I just look stupid. Um I just think it's not not the vibe. The I think robes I look are basic as hell. They're lame. They're not cool. Like I, I know that'd be very occult e-girl of me, but it's just not. I'm not doing it. They don't, they, they do not, they're not the vibe. And I could make, like, for my rituals that are not using, like, set robes where it's just, like, me invoking a spirit and I do actually dress up for the ritual, I've made them look, like, incredible. I've done, like, really cool ritual outfits. Oh, yeah. Like, correspondence match, they have all the important things, they follow all the parameters. So it's doable. It's completely doable to make them better. We can upgrade. We can, as a community, do better. We can. We can. We can, we can do better. We do not under any circumstances, need to keep using the same terrible designs. We can do better. And we should. We probably should, like, actually designs. There's no reason why we wouldn't, and it's, like, creative and cool. I don't know. I think we should upgrade them. I mean, I think we should. Upgrade them. 
Um, and like I've seen people like recreate like um, old like Greek and Roman like Goetia robe sets, and those look like okay, but like they're still cooler than what we do, so it's doable. I've seen people do cool stuff. Uh, to the person who asked me if I was winning at the game, this game has no failure state, but um, no, also not win. But you can't really win this, one, so it's fine. I just also, if you ever see like a full Golden Dawn ritual, it looks insanely goofy. It looks yeah. terrible. Yeah. You want to know what ritual does not look goofy, though? Which one? The Bornless ritual is oh, so... Oh, yeah. Make every spirit a sub me said every spirit of... Like, it's so good. There's actually someone who set the Bornless ritual to music. Um, it's on uh, Spotify. That's that. It's really cool. Ooh. It's, uh, just look up the Bornless ritual on Spotify. I, can, I think it's by the Aeon. I'm pretty sure it's, it's very cool. They, like, made it like a song. Um, but it's just the text of it. Um, it's actually, no, if you look up, it is, uh, let me find it. I have it saved. One second. Um, just, you know, I've gotten out at 9, 5, or 10, 15. The Bornless one no, by the gonna... Aeon. The, it's on, Bornless one by the Aeon. It's very cool. Also, uh, for those of you who don't know, I usually say when the stream is going to end, we're going to end, like, 10, 10. Okay. Yeah, 10-10. That, that works good with me. I'll, I'll add it 10-10. Cool. But yeah, I absolutely... I don't stream a lot, so... It, it's... I, I still... I ha I used to stream regularly. I don't, I don't I don't typically stream a ton. I feel like I'm... I don't know. Maybe I should stream more. This, I do You're enjoy always welcome streaming. to come on my stream. Yeah, that's probably what I'll do. I'm not going to set a regular date to stream. I'll just, like, pop on yours. It's fine. Like anyone else who hosts me, I'm not gonna. Do you have to sew for you? Um, you can make your own robes. You can have someone else make them for you. You can buy them and assemble okay. them with things. As a guy, I don't, know. I don't have somebody to sew for me. I had to learn how to sew myself. And let me just tell you, when you learn how to sew, your magical vestments level up with you because you get to make some insane things and it is the only excuse I don't have for making a physical tape like a physical circle on the ground is I don't want to bother sewing it I have oh have, do you know the cheat way to get a circle on the ground that blasts for a long time the canvas print right well yes you can canvas print them you can go on Redbubble and upload them as an image and then print it as a po as like a, a poster or a banner yeah. but what you can also do is buy a giant I did this for a long time you buy these giant pieces of paper that are used to make like banners or big big signs um, that are like literally like you can get them massive you can get like 10 feet okay. poster right and you just draw it on it and it stays you just put it like I, I did it on like a like kind of glossy poster paper with like um a, like a paint marker. Yeah. And I I did a couple of circles and it works. It's not as like aesthetic as sewing it and making it really, really cool, but it does the same thing. You can make them look nice. So And then of course the very cheat way is of course uploading it to Redbubble and then buying. That's <laughs> no, I I have an entire video where I talk about how that is like the cheapest way you can sometimes. Just the because, tap like, pay, oh, paper. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Both those are very cheap or easy, time saving ways. You can, of course, sew the circle yourself. And there are people who sell like sewn ritual circles online, but they tend to be very expensive, I think. But I get why they are that much expensive. That's a lot of work. So. It is a lot of work, but it's also a lot of money that I don't. Yeah. So it's, it's your call. I think the pricing is fair considering the amount of oh, work. Oh, it's that absolutely goes. fair. I've bought things from Azov Arts before. Yeah. It's just it's just a matter of like, are you going to pay the money to get the absolutely massive canvas print? Or are you going to buy some three hundred dollar circle from some seller on Etsy that is invariably going to be a much better quality? Let's be honest, it's going to be better quality. 
Yeah, it just depends on how you want to go about it. I mean, it's really no no right or wrong way. I think there's a little bit of like, you know, doing things yourself. Obviously, you can kind of infuse it and do mm-hmm. fun things. But I will say the oh, yeah. funniest thing that happened with Ritual Circles is for a while there was a Amazon shop that was selling a like Goetic Circle, but they just used stock image. They just used whatever Amazon stock images were for like the room it was in. And it, Amazon for a while had it, so it was like a baby's like cradle room, like a nursery with a goetic circle on the floor. Um, what? And I, yeah, and they had like they edited like a plush, like the am. It was Amazon. It was just like a stock background. There was like a little plushie on the circle. Oh wait, what? That's. Yeah, I don't think it's up anymore, but it was for a while. It was really funny. That's so <laughs> ridiculous. I'll take the column on the uh, like evocation circle. You know what I'm talking about? Oh God, I've. I know I've talked to you about this, but uh, I absolutely hate those yoga pants. The ones with all, like, the goetic cells. Are we shading Telstar? Yeah, they're pretty atrocious. Yeah, I hate them. I My bounded demons are not your fucking yoga pants, God damn it! Well, like, Killstar does a lot of prints that are just, like, really random occult symbols that don't make sense. Yeah. Like, they're less bad about it the past few years. It used to be, like, really atrocious. Like, probably in, like, 2018, 2019. It was kind of trendy back then. Now they've chilled it a little bit. Where they did like a cult symbol like spam. Oh right? God, now I they do stuff. Like they do like, like, but it's, there was one where I remember it was like people were memeing on it because it had like orthodox, like monk, like schema imagery. But then it also had like random, like pentagrams. Then they had like a Buddhist symbol and it just made like no sense together. Yeah. Yeah. And they had like, Enochian, like, like celestial thing and then like there are a bunch of them just google like kill star occult yoga pant or pants or whatever and you'll see that they it used they were they were really bad and they, they did not look cute either but awesome. they had like the random symbols ever together also if uh if you are anyone are wondering uh please do not under any circumstances wear enochian themed Tattoos. Like, don't get in a place. That's- uh, occult tattoos, you should be incredibly careful with, actually. Oh, yeah. I am not... So, so I think occult tattoos are a complicated subject because there are certain things that actually make sense to tattoo on yourself, and I actually think can spiritually benefit you. Yeah. The thing is, though, this is the way you should think about it. Any symbol that you tattoo onto your skin, right? Yeah. Um, it does, like... You know what I mean? That that's bu- that's binding a symbol on yourself of some sort, right? So whatever you put on yourself, you should think about that symbol. Like maybe don't put a a a, a Nokian thing or a Goetian. Don't fucking put a Goetian. That's like really stupid. Don't do that. Um, don't put like random runes you don't understand. Like if you get a rune, you should know what that rune means. Um, you should have worn it as a pendant for a while. Like, I actually have, like, an occult symbol tattooed on me. It's it's on my, my like, upper spine. Yep. Um, and I thought about that before I did that. Um, and was smart about it. And it's, it's not messed me up. But I, I do think there are certain people who have gotten occult tattoos that are really not smart to put on themselves. And I have heard of pretty negative things happening. So be careful. Don't just get it because it looks cool. Like, think about what that actually means. Yeah, you want to be careful about that kind of stuff because you don't want it to just, like, mess up your magic because that's a whole thing in and of itself, right? That's a whole thing. And if thing. you have a tattoo that is a sigil on you and you do not want that affecting you in a ritual, they sell these uh, tattoo bandages. Um, they're mostly for, like, Japan people getting into the onsens. Like, the little... Because you can't go into them with um, tattoos visible. So people wear these, like, patches over you can do that, or you can use, um, like, a concealer or makeup to cover it, um, so it's not visible, so it doesn't mess with your ritual as much. Yes. There are Thai monks do do holy tattoos. I would get one. If I was in Thailand, I would do it. Oh, yeah. I think they're about them. They're really cool, Dave. There are very few things I would ever get a tattoo for. Uh, that, I think, is probably one of the... Probably yeah, they're, the, the things. they're, they're really cool. Um... Some celebrity got one and claims it's why she's successful because they put some like uh, spirit that relates to that on her. It was um I don't remember which one. You can find it online. Oh yeah, there's there's a bunch of stuff like um <laughs> I would... and yeah, it's 
tattoos are a whole subject in it next time you come on we'll talk about the tattoos more because we had an entire yeah. discussion when you were getting your tattoo like when you were planning yeah, it, we, it was like here's yeah, we had all a- of the things you need to think so, right? just in general Make- Megan Fox had her Marilyn Monroe tattoo removed because it brings bad energy. I could see that. That woman lived. Marilyn Monroe lived a really horrible life. Really oh, yeah. awful. Life, actually, um, there's a movie on Netflix called I think it's called Blonde that I watched that was like really almost hard to watch. Yeah, it's, um, about it's really. Oh man, it's pretty bad. But... Also, if you get a tattoo of somebody, uh, be very know the in in outs of their life before you get one, because. What? you should probably get a tattoo of a person in general i don't know like what if they like do something bad or like become like a terrorist or something like what do you do then you have their face on you i guess you could do a dead person but even then i don't know i don't think i would want a person's all face right. on all right that would... what if somebody got a tattoo of crap back of their head terrifying on the back of your head yeah no like, the, like they're shaved <laughs> and the back of their head is just that one picture of crowley with doing the uh i, I think it's the o that God, do not do that. Chat, do not do that. Do not get an idea for that. If you do get an idea, you have learned the wrong lessons from this section of the stream. Yeah, yeah. Bind Crowley's face to you. That's Bind really sp- Crowley's face to your the back of your head. Perfect idea. Perfect idea, yeah, guys. Really smart. Really smart idea. We're, we're giving really good advice. I gave my, like, like, burn your house down. Not advice, but discussion. Then we have put Crowley on you. It's really good. Um, the power tramping, tripping rant. Yeah, just Google um, Navy SEALs occult copy pasta. It'll come up. It's on Reddit. Yeah. Um, what is the I, spiritual answer- consequences of getting a tattoo of Homer Simpson? No, we're not on answering. A YouTube no. oh. not friendly thing. Uh, well, the same Whoa. thing. Getting demonetized. Yeah. So I'm not going to do that. Uh, big band. Band off YouTube. Get banned. Yeah. And YouTube is, is like, not too crazy. Actually, I've only gotten in trouble with YouTube one time. And it's because I put copyrighted music in something, which was kind of my fault. Yeah. Worst case, but I just I cut the first couple of minutes. I don't think they're going to care. I don't. They don't do much. I, I don't know. No, it's I, just because I swore. That's it. They don't think. Um, I think you, they, like, only really target people who, like... I, th- I think they're... I'll just say this. I think their moderation is selective. Oh, yeah, it is. Like, I don't... I, occult channels don't really get targeted for things that, like... If, was a philosophy or politics uh, channel they would de- uh just because you have to go soon i'm just going to say uh final questions in chat because yeah final yeah questions fi- you guys have any burning occult questions now is your moment to ask um i guess while you- we're while we're waiting for chat to catch up hey georgina uh where can people find you like they don't know yeah i'm dot darling d-a-a-t on the internet I am on every platform. Uh, YouTube and my podcast are like my best content. That's what I would actually look up. It's all on my YouTube channel. You can also listen to the podcast on podcasting platforms. Uh, I also am on Twitter. That's like my worst platform. I'm really hectic on there. I'm on TikTok, uh, Telegram, Instagram, Threads, Substack. Um, Where are you? Yes, you are there. Uh, and if I am you are... Where I also, right now, um, I'm uh, doing a group trip. Uh, to Cairo and Luxor in September 2024 through Trova Trip, where basically um, we have, I think, 12 people currently, somewhere like that. Um, but up to 20 people can come with me to see uh, like all sorts of like really cool like esoteric heritage sites and stuff. It's it's really cool. Um, all that is on all my social medias. You can find it. They're all linked. I have a link tree in all my bios that you can just get like a massive drop down of everything I do. But I'm on everywhere probably like the most multi-platform creator there is i think i'm on like a like actually kind of a ridiculous amount of places and i'm active on those places too like i post yeah georgina is addicted to all social media and she is on all of them i am basically just here uh occasionally i'll post updates if you want like actual occult content like where i talk about how to actually do all of the shit that's in the grimoires uh go to my patreon where i have a monthly written guide on an occult topic uh this month i'm just taking the l and just writing all of the angelic stuff including a breakdown of trithemius's drawing spirits into crystals and the greater keys conjuration 
uh, well, actually the confession in the greater key, which is hilariously long. So yeah, um, that's where you can find me because I know a lot of people follow from Georgina's channel. So yeah. Yep. What, there is one question. Where are we and what is the purpose? Uh, we are in the physical realm and the reason we're in the physical realm is according Rip. to some... Rip. What? Oh, it just cut it, out. Oh, no. Ara, we are doomed. It's oh, yeah, so over. No. The reason why we're here is because we need to learn what chocolate tastes like and pumpkin spice lattes. Okay, fair. Maybe the material world is good, actually. Maybe the Demiurge is good. Maybe, Maybe we're the going Demiurge for didn't do a bad thing. Yeah. Maybe good stuff does exist. Shocking. This, this whole... The, you know what? The Gnostic conversation just reminds me of, like, that one... There was a... A long time ago on Tumblr, there was a conversation about, like, Steven Universe stuff. And they were talking about how... Why? Tumblr huh? conversation in Universe. Why? Question oh. number one, Why? Oh, yeah. It's because... There was a whole thing about, like, it's actually evil, right? He's actually vegan. And then somebody just shows the intro of him eating a hot dog. Like, in the intro. Oh, man. It's great. I love it. Because it's like, there's actually good stuff in the world. And the Demiurge didn't do a bad thing. Because if the Demiurge didn't make physical life and physical reality, you wouldn't be able to drink pumpkin spice lattes. And that's it. That's what we're ending on. Great seeing y'all. I have been Dave the Amateur Magus. This has been Georgina Rose of the Dot Darling YouTube channel. Thank y'all for stopping by. Hope you guys are having a good day. And if you're not having a good day, hope your day got a little bit better watching the stream. Take it easy. Take care.